Melander playing the best hockey he's ever played. Mitch Marner uh, having 15 assists in the last six games, starting to play some of the best hockey we've seen from him of late. Uh, you've got to maximize the now. You've, you're all in on the core four, Jim. I don't care about players that are 15, 16, 17 years old right now. I care about these guys in their prime and serving them with the best possible complement of players heading into these playoffs. Yeah, you look at whoever you draft. I mean, especially if it's a, if it's a defenseman or a goaltender, uh, you're looking five or six years down the road uh, for a forward, maybe four or five. I mean, that's uh, that, that's uh, the final year of Austin Matthews' contract. I mean, who even wants to go there? There's plenty to do before then. Yeah, I'm totally I'm totally with you on that. So, yes guy, no guy, Jim. Now that we're seeing Joseph Wall reemerging in a conditioning stint with the Marlies having a very successful outing uh the other night in a 4-1 win. Yes guy, no guy, Joseph Wall, who was establishing himself as the number one goaltender in Leafland when he was hurt in that game against Ottawa a couple of months back. Joseph Wall will reestablish himself as the go-to guy between now and game one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. I'm going to say yes, guy. I, I think they, you know, they have the, the health and science department to make sure that everything's okay. Haven't heard any reports about anything uh, today in terms of, you know, is he okay? I, I assume he is. So I'm going to, I, I, just based on that, I'm going to say, yeah, he'll, he'll regain that job. Um, he'll be better for it. And so will the least because Sammy's uh, better than he was before. And I just, I, I have my fingers crossed that somehow they find a way to keep Martin Jones because, you know, injury can happen, and boy, you don't want to revisit that without a, a strong number three. Yeah, I'm a yes guy on this, too. I really do believe there's enough time now. You've got nearly two months between now and the beginning of the playoffs. I think Joseph Wall, he, we've seen him in practice an awful lot in the lead-up to this conditioning stint with the Marlies. He's looked awfully good. We've heard teammates giving very good reviews from the practice ice. So, yeah, I think there's more than enough time here for Joseph Wall to get back in there, reestablish what he was working on uh, when he got hurt, and get back to that level, which was, you know, trending to be very, very high, and which is very good news for the Maple Leafs, given the, as long as Samsonov maintains what he's been doing. And I agree with you. It might be difficult to do, but if they can keep Martin Jones around as an insurance policy, that would be a welcome, welcome bit of news. Oh, boy, you could just see if he if he gets moved and there's an injury. That would be catastrophic. But anyway, we don't want to plant any seeds. Um, yes guy, no guy. Even with this roster, before any moves at the deadline, there's enough here to get into round two or three in the playoffs. Yeah, I'm a yes guy. I mean, I, I've been of the belief that there's enough with this group to get there uh, before, many times before. You know, I yeah. picked them to win in the first round every time they've lost in the first round, pretty much. So I've always been, you know, somewhat surprised by the fact that they haven't been able to rise to the occasion in the playoffs. And certainly at least they got over one hump last year before falling flat against the Florida Panthers. But look, I mean, this is ultimately going to be about your best players being your best players. We know that Austin Matthews has not scored at the rate uh, in the playoffs that he has scored in the regular season. He's going to have to rectify that. He, this is a guy who's still never scored a goal beyond the first round because he, he was blanked in those five games against the Panthers. But, I, I, you know, this is this is who they are. This is who they've been. You know, whether or not you've got a couple extra support players that you didn't have last year, that shouldn't matter to me. This is about your best players being your best players. You don't hear Nathan McKinnon complaining about the fact that his number two center isn't very good. You know, and guess what? Every team's got depth challenges in a capped out league. Uh, to me, the least best players have never been better. That, to me, is a formula for being better than they've ever been in the playoffs. Go ahead, sir. Yes, guy, no guy, Jim. Uh, we're talking about Matthews here uh, on pace for 77. Uh, yes, guy, no guy, simple. In a, in a Hart Trophy matchup tonight against Nathan McKinnon, yes, guy, no guy, it will be Matthews who lifts the Hart Trophy. Oh, I'm going to say yes, guy, to that. I just think there's just, I mean, he was always very, very good. There's no question about that. You start with four goals in your first game. Guess what? You're a good hockey player. Uh, but it, it's just like a reveal. As the years go on, there's, there's more and more to this guy. So I, I, he's fully capable. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go with a hard yes guy there. Yeah, I'm a yes guy today. I mean, although I'm, I'm going to reserve the right to change my opinion because I do think this is going to be one of those, one of those award races that's going to flip. Like, Two weeks ago, if you and me were sitting here doing a yes guy, no guy, yes guy, no guy, Austin Matthews would be the MVP of this league. 
we would have said no guy because he wasn't even in the conversation. You know, he maybe a little bit, but he certainly wasn't in the odds conversation. He was a distant fourth in the odds. Now he's rocketed up to being a favorite. And I think, look, we, we have no signs of a slump right now. Uh, he, he's on the hottest streak he's ever been on. But look, McKinnon is McKinnon. McDavid's McDavid. Kucherov's still leading the points race. Uh, a lot can happen is what I'm saying in these final couple of months. So I'm not ready to proclaim it as, a, as an absolute. But if I had to vote today, I'd be voting for number 34 on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Okay, this is sort of a, a fantasy style, uh, yes guy, no guy. Yes guy, no guy, as good as Austin Matthews is now, there's actually a couple of more layers that we'll reveal over the next couple of years. I got to say yes guy. I think you're right. I think there's something to that. We're starting to see, we, look, he, we've always known he can be a very effective defensive player. We've always known he's outstanding with his stick, obviously. The same skills that make him a peerless shooter with great hand-eye coordination and great feel for the puck make him also a tenacious defender because he can strip pucks with the best of them. He can win puck battles with his incredible hand strength and speed and you know just pure touch. Um, so I do think there's more on the defensive side of the puck that he can reveal. I do think – and I also think, look – the obvious thing that he has to reveal is his ability to do what he's doing right now in these 82 games in a best of seven series and really do it, you know, again and again and again uh, as a team carries on through the playoffs. So th there's a lot that has to be revealed if he's going to fulfill his potential as a player in the playoffs. So that's a huge yes guy for me. We could squeeze one more in if you have it. Yeah, look, uh, Let's go yes guy, no guy. When you think about Team Canada and you think about the best on best hockey we're going to be looking forward to with this four nations thing next year and then the Olympics, obviously, uh, the year after in 2026. Yes guy, no guy. Um, in the race for number one center in Team Canada, uh, you like oh. McKinnon or you like McDavid? So let's say you oh, like McKinnon boy. over McDavid. Oh, I'm going to say, oh, boy, this is just so tough. I'm going to actually say no guy. I'm going to say I like McDavid over McKinnon. Okay. I would hope that at some point they'd actually play in the same line somehow. <laughs> That's what That'd be cool. The, right? In the old days with Gretzky and Lemieux, they'd find a way to play them on the same line. You're right. That would be that's the that's the nuclear option for whoever's coaching this team. You're 100 percent right. Yeah, I'm, I, look, it's it's always tough because in some ways, you know, there's always been that feeling that McKinnon and maybe uh, Crosby would be line mates because they're they're hometown pals and and uh, and maybe Mc, 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 McKinnon's a better guy to pair with elite players because it's so hard to find people that can play well with Mc, 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 with McDavid. Um, who knows? But uh, you know, yeah. I I like McDavid too. Um, but look, it's it's going to be a nice one-two punch to have those two guys up the middle and uh, going against the U.S. team. It's going to have big number thirty-four as their number one. Yeah. So when I recap the uh, the yes guy no guy, when I went over the draft schmaft, you know, a couple of weeks ago, if I'd asked myself that question, I would have said no guy. But now I'm a yes guy just based on on how well they played in the six game winning streak and the variety of contributors. Fun to watch. We'll set up the opening face off for you next. This is Leafs Game Night on TSN 1050, the iHeart Radio app, and the Leafs Radio Network. There are many peculiar words in the English language. Words like soliviant, peregrinate, nemophilus, peripatetic, and conviviality. Yet, there is no word for getting the most out of winter in your Subaru, thanks to symmetrical full-time all-wheel drive and X-Mode. Until now. We call it unhibernate. As in, while your neighbors stay home, you'll be unhibernating all winter in your Subaru. So peregrinate to your local Subaru dealer today. And welcome to Uncommon Winter Confidence. Breaking story from Alpine News Network. Sandra and Kabir are celebrating 50 years of marriage by turning their boring bedroom into a spicy one. Oh, my. Alpine Credit sent a super strength hero to help with a home renovation load. New floors, windows, a heart-shaped button that plays this tune. Okay, I think that's quite enough. Own your home? Need a loan? Alpine Credits can help. Alpine Credits, where homeowners get approved. Just for license 12616. Who says kids get to have all the fun during March break? Say no to building a snowman. And shell yeah to building sandcastles with Sunwing Vacations. 
We've got what you're looking for out of paradise, like water parks, crystal clear waters, white sand beaches, and more. Not to mention a host of breathtaking destinations, each as beautiful as the last. When you save more, you can explore more with your travel agent or... At Trillium Health Partners, we're ready to see you. Not just as a patient, but as a person. A person who needs innovative care with a human touch. A person with a life, with hopes, and with fears. At Trillium Health Partners, we'll see the whole you. Our nurses, our doctors, and our staff. Because when we care for the whole person, our whole community gets stronger. Trillium Health Partners, we see you. Learn more at weseeyou.ca. Well, it's been a great week, a great two weeks, in fact. 6-0 and on their last uh, three of those coming on the road. So many storylines. Austin Matthews ripping it up. Bobby McMahon has emerged, and so has the entire roster. Finally, everyone on the same page. You are likely wondering if that continues. Don't know, but let's find out. Most of Canadian Leafs hockey starts now. It's time for Molson Canadian Leafs Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Leafs Radio Network. The Leafs live here. And finishing off a road trip in Colorado tonight, welcome to Molson Canadian Leafs Hockey. Jim Taddy, Dave Festchuk from the Toronto Star with you. Joe Bone and Jimmy Rouse standing by. They'll be with us in a few minutes. The starting lineup is brought to you by Molson. Whether it's Canadian Ultra Export or Excel, there's a Molson with your name on it. And for the Leafs lineup tonight, it goes exactly like this. Matthew centering Marner and Nyes, Domi centering Nylander and Bertuzzi, Tavares between Robertson and McMahon, Camp between Reeves and Holmberg on the blue line. It's Brody Lilligren, Riley Lagesson and Benoit and McCabe, Sammy in goal. Dave, what do you make of all that? What do I make of all that, Jim? I, I tell you that there's so many great storylines in this incredible six-game run that, that one of the ones that we are totally ignoring is the fact that Mitch Marner is... 15 assists in the last six games. He's got multiple assists in six straight games, and he's trying to do it for a seventh. There's only one player who's done it more than seven times in a row. That guy is Wayne Gretzky, who did it eight times in a row, eight multiple assist games in a row back in 1984. Marner going for game seven of that nature. Just a remarkable streak by the setup man of the greatest goal scorer on the planet. You know, if we played a little game called Two Minutes on Each Player, you'd be able to do that for each one of those players I just named off. There's a story for each of them. It's so amazing. You're right. You know, Nylander just came off a six-game streak where he'd, he'd scored a goal in each of them. I mean, Max Domi's hot. I mean, you know, uh, John Tavares is doing a really good job on the third line. Bobby McMahon's a whole – Bobby McMahon's writing a book for how to how to emerge from obscurity and become a, a absolute, uh, a, you know, a, a go-to guy who's going to be a playoff starter. There's no doubt about it, given the explosion of scoring that he's put together in these past six games. Games, of course, uh, at a moment where he was supposed to be a healthy scratch, comes out and gets the hat trick, and he hasn't looked back since. Uh, and even that, even that fourth line, David Camp is uh, David Camp and Holmberg have been producing of late. Uh, impressive, impressive stuff. When, it, when you talk about a team that had been sort of accused of relying too much on their top few guys, everybody's hit, uh, chipping in right now. Well, as we mentioned earlier, Colorado, the best of the business on home ice, 22-5-0. and oh. Here's Coach Keith on what makes Colorado such a tough out. Just a really good team, plays well, knows how to win. You know, they've got elite players that uh, make you pay when you make mistakes, and, and they don't make money themselves. How different is the preparation when you don't really have a practice day, but then it's followed by, like, an earlier start? Where you don't... Yeah, it's a little different. Uh, with, you know, normally after taking a day off yesterday after the back-to-back, you'd get a morning skate in today. Uh, schedule makes it harder, uh, so it's unique in, in that sense. But, you know, we had good meetings this morning, and, and it's been a good trip to this point, so I just want the guys to continue to build on what they've done well. Has it been a conscious decision to kind of give them a little more time away from the ice, just for rest, I guess? Well, just the nature of the schedule here, right? I mean, we started started with uh, a game on the on the road on what were we Monday and then and then you tr- you travel and you got a back to back and then then you go again again here and you got funny uh, funny start times uh, in in there we've played at 12 8 7 and now 5 so so yeah we're coming into this trip I mean, we we made a decision that we weren't going to practice uh, we had potential for for practice on on, on either uh, Tuesday or, or or yesterday but uh, 
just ultimately decided that rest was most important. Any lineup changes tonight? No changes, no. Jared Bednar would just say you guys don't get enough credit for the defensive play that you guys have had during this stretch. What are you liking on that side of the puck? I know we focus a lot on the offense. Yeah, we just, you know, the guys have been committed to it. We, we've, we've, uh, like, I think our pursuit and pressure on the puck have, have gotten to be way more consistent the way we would like it to be uh, and consistent throughout the lineup in all three zones. So that's that's really helped us, you know, as we've talked about a bunch. We've, we've defended the way we want to at different points in the season. We just haven't been able to put it together consistently for, for whatever reason. But uh, uh, the guys have really been buying in uh, here for the last little while. Um and we're going to have to continue that. I mean, this is going to be our toughest test uh, of this trip here for sure. Uh, and it's a, it's a much deeper uh, group than we we saw the last time we played Colorado and know what they're capable of, especially in this building. That, that first St. Louis game there that started this run, like the bodies you were missing that night, like how much that was a, an intention grabber kind of in hindsight when you look at the way your team has played since then? Yeah, just, you know, they... I think just you know, losing, uh, if you go back, you know, Morgan's leaving the lineup and and then the, the illness and injuries that we've been dealing with, it's just, uh, you know, the guys have no choice but to, to play better if you want to have success and, and be that much more committed and consistent with the team structure and what we're asking them to do. Um, but I, I just really felt that our team's growing a lot. I think that, that's a big part of it. Um, I think you know this is one you know I think the the end basically of long road trips for us for the regular season here and and uh, I felt uh, on this trip in particular that the group is is uh, really coming together uh, closer than it's been at any point in this season. I think that's maybe something that's been a little understated is just how many how many changes uh, and how many different people that were brought in um, and then you combine that with the number of players that we have that are in their first year in the league. Uh, so we'd expect it to be a group that would get better as it moves along, and we're in a good place here now. But as we know, yeah, the NHL is a very demanding and difficult place, and you just got to stay humble and keep working. We're going to be put to the test here today, but uh, just stay with our game. Just in terms of that growth, is there something specific you're seeing from this team in terms of how they've evolved? Well, like I've said, I think just, just our commitment uh, away from the puck and, and um, how often we, we've, we've got numerical advantages on the ice. That's something that we've we've really strived for. It's a difficult thing to do. It takes it takes commitment. It takes attention to detail. Uh, um, it's taking care of the puck. Uh, but I just think we're we're in sync uh, right now more so than we've been. You have a uh, player who's posting special numbers like like Austin is. I mean, can you appreciate it as a coach, or is it just business as usual? And yeah, I certainly can, you, you can appreciate it, of course. Uh, you know, um, we're very fortunate to have a player of that caliber on our team. Obviously, he's not the only one. We've got other special guys that make special plays and, and help our team. But um, as we've seen here, our team's gotten better the more that uh, our entire team game has improved. Um, and Austin leads the way for us uh, in ways that we know and are obvious and show up on the score sheet. But he leads the way in so many other categories that uh, helps set the standard for our team and defending and taking on tough matchups and still finding ways to succeed. Um, so you know, that's really what we need for Austin to continue to do is to, to, to lead the way that help the, to help our team win consistently. Coach Keith getting set for the Avs and talking about a great run by the Maple Leafs. Dave, I think this, uh, I look at this game as fascinating because you're going to learn something when you see what Coach Bednar does with McKinnon and who he tries to match him up against. And, and then of course there's the counter from Coach Keith where on a faceoff dot he's going to put two centers out there. I mean, that, that's a uh, playoff style, isn't it? Well, this is the beauty of what Keith's doing right now, right? Is that it's a, it's a pick your poison situation now when he's got the core four spread out among three lines. The, the Avalanche don't necessarily have the depth to deal with that in, a, in an ideal world, right? Because yeah. no matter who you pick to shut down, you want to shut down Matthews Marner, that frees up the Domi Bertuzzi Nylander line. It also frees up John Tavares, Nick Robertson, and Bobby McMahon to play against, you know, a third, third, uh, third rate, third line, uh, you know, uh, opponents. And it's, that's, yeah. that's awfully good for Sheldon Keefe and going to be very difficult for Jared Bednar if it goes the way the Leafs hope it does. 
And just another quick thought. One of the other emerging stories in the Leafs, Reeves is playing again, and he's found a role, hasn't he? You know what? He's been very effective. And there have been moments this season where people were like, whoa, three years with this guy. Seems like an awful lot for a guy who's 37. And But he's he's made himself useful out there. I mean, he can get into the middle of the ice. He can get to the middle of the fray. We know that. And uh, look, he's he's been every time he's been on the ice in these past handful of games, he's you know he's been around the puck an awful lot. He's He's been around the net an awful lot. And good things have happened more often than not for that fourth line with Ryan Reeves a part of it. So the Leafs in Colorado, the Leafs on a six-game winning streak, Colorado 4-4-2 and two in their last 10. They had a six-game Eastern swing recently. They were 1-4-1 and one on that, so that's not abs-like numbers, but we'll see what happens. Opening face-off is next. Molson Canadian Leafs Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Leafs Radio Network. The NFL's top draft prospects are ready to show what they've got at the 2024 NFL Scouting Combine. Deep down the middle of field, Marvin Harrison's going to take it to the house. Tune in for exclusive interviews with GMs, head coaches, and the top prospects as they prepare for the NFL Draft. You put the tape on, they're good football players, so sometimes it helps. You kind of know what you're getting. Coverage kicks off Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern on Sirius XM NFL Radio Channel 88 in the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. The Power Play with Steve Coolius. I'm with John Cooper, head coach of the Lightning. You've been in Tampa 12 years. Do you think you could run the table where you are? You know, we have something special here. For me personally, as soon as long as the fire still burns and the burn to win uh, and to make this city proud, I will do this as long until they kick me out. And as long as that's happening, if somebody takes me, uh, I'll be there to give them everything I have. The Power Play. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. The Point with Boomer Gordon. The Avs got a little Jekyll and Hyde going on this year. And when they're rolling, they look unstoppable and you think, wow, no one's going to slow down the Avs. And then when it doesn't go well, you go, they're just not deep enough. Nichushkin isn't there right now. We don't know if Landis Gog is going to come back. Yes, Colorado's good, Jake, but unless McKinnon's getting two, three points every night, they don't have the parts. Points with Boomer Gordon. 1 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. The Power Play with Steve Coolius. With Tyler Toffoli of the New Jersey Devils. Lindy Ruff, is he still the prankster in the room? Is- Just a quick little funny story. We had a little playoff football pool, and me and Nate Bastion won. Lindy obviously came up to me right away and asked where I was taking him out for dinner. He's been great at it. Just with, with the whole season and being there, uh, talking to all the boys when things aren't going well, and, and just trying to encourage us to play the up to our potential. It's been good. He's, he's awesome. The Power Play. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. From in the crease to in the locker room. Mr. Rick Tockett, if you're taking a mix of coaches you had that the best of, what is that mix for Rick Tockett? Scotty Bowman behind the bench, tactician. Mike Keenan, a lot of stuff that coaches do now, he did. Jim Schaaf, the father figure. And Mike Sullivan. You know, I still talk to guys like Craig Burby, Travis Green. So, I, you know, there's a mixture, and then you got to find your own niche, right? Sirius XM, NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91. And on your schedule with the Sirius XM app. Hey Toronto, I'm David Morissuti, host of the daily Toronto Me Please podcast, Locked On Lease, part of the Locked On Podcast Network on the Sirius XM app. Every weekday, we bring you the latest Leafs news and analysis, break down all the action, including this game you're listening to right now, and preview the next one. We're giving you everything a Leafs fan could want, all in a daily 30-minute podcast. Download Locked On Leafs right now on the Sirius XM app, available with all trials and popular plans. Or where you get your podcast, search Locked On. Feel the passion of Major League Soccer all season long on Sirius XM FC. Stupendously magnificent! Every week, hear all the top matches, including every Inter Miami game. Messi up over and get analysis and insight from our team of experts like former MVP Tony Miola. He looks so confident. It's starting to look so easy. It's Major League Soccer's biggest season ever, and you can experience it on Sirius XM FC 157 and streaming on the all-new Sirius XM app. Join me, Ward Stellick, and Scott Laughlin as we recap the night that was on NHL Morning Skate, weekday mornings at 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM 91. The Leafs complete what has been an outstanding road trip as they tangle with the Avalanche in Denver, Colorado. And it will be Ilya Samsonov starting in goal for the Maple Leafs. 11-7-1 and a 3.19 goals against average. And for the Colorado Avalanche, Alexander Georgiev. 
who is the workhorse of the National Hockey League, 30, 13, and 3. And a 2.90 goals against average. He's 5, 3, and 0 oh, lifetime against the Toronto Maple Leafs, who have got a six-game winning streak on the line and are 10, 2, and 0 oh in their last dozen games. So an important game to try and wrap up what has been an outstanding standing road trip thus far and we were talking about this last game where after the ottawa loss a couple of weeks ago i guess it wasn't a couple of weeks ago was it it was <laughs> melds so fast i don't even know what yesterday no, was yeah maybe oh no you know what it was it was <laughs> two weeks ago uh but you looked at the schedule and you saw this road trip and you thought oh no now you're without morgan riley for the next five games now you've got this road trip coming up against the west against teams that uh, seem to be poised to make playoff runs. And you thought, by the time this game ended, the Leafs could find themselves outside of a playoff spot, outside of a wild card spot. And obviously, they've been able to turn it around. And uh, their dominance against the West has been absolutely incredible. 21-5-2. And this is the last game. uh, Against the Western Conference. Last road game. Because I think we've got still Arizona. Yeah, we've got Arizona, Ar- Arizona coming in on uh, yeah. but, uh but, on the, but on the road, this is the last road game against the Western Conference. 11-2-2. Two, and two. Only two losses came in Edmonton and Vancouver in that four-game trip that the Leafs had out west. Now, in the first meeting between these two teams, the Leafs had a comfortable lead and had it evaporate. And the Avalanche came back to win. They defend the goal to our left and the Avalanche to the right. We're underway. Glad you're along with us. Matthews trying to get a puck free and it is pushed out at center ice now and brought down by Anton and in over the line. He'll backhand it in wide of the goal. The Leafs are able to get it freed up on the left wing and it's brought out at center and just flipped down into Avalanche territory. Devin Taves going back to retrieve it. Gets it off to McCarr. McCarr's trying to stretch things out as the rest of his mates have changed as well. A pass up on the left wing and Wood backhands down into the Toronto zone. Out of the net was uh, Samsonov. Benoit trying to clear it, but it's gone up into the screen and out of play. Boy, Colorado's calling for delay a game penalty. But I don't believe there was a signal for me, the referee, once the puck left the plane service. Benoit trying to throw it around in behind his own net. And it ended up. Oh, wait a minute. That, that, wait a minute. Now we're having the. Uh, yeah, this. It's gathering like of the, the minds. The one Colorado player beside Benoit was the only one that seemed to try to signal it right away. But now there will be a discussion to try to get the right call. We're going to look at it. Did it go off now, the Colorado player? Oh, he's God, the one who was pointing. No, we're going to get a behind. Oh, again, that's that's hard to tell because Ross yep. Colton gets there. I think the Leafs might be getting something here. Number two, delay a game, puck over glass. Well, it would appear the Colorado Avalanche have called the penalty and will go to the first power play of the game. So the penalty kill is brought to you by CMC Markets. Take your trading to the next level with $0 commission on stocks. Avalanche power play. And struggled of late. They're ninth overall in the NHL coming in, but two for 29 in their last nine, 0 for 10 in their last three, which is a scary stat when you look at the talent they've got on the ice. Rantanen taking the draw, but uh, moving prematurely in there was uh, McKinnon, so a switch is made. And now it is uh, Drouin who lost the draw. The puck goes around the boards. Tripped up, though, and falling there was McCabe. But the Leafs are going to get the puck out at center ice. That could have been a costly break. Now here's Marner breaking in on the wing. Worked uh, onto the backhand, but didn't shoot it. Now trying to rag the puck against the boards. Has it knocked away. Restores it. Loses it. Uh, Kills off about 20 seconds in doing so. McCarr will drop the puck back. Brought forward by McKinnon. McKinnon threw neutral ice, got to the leaf zone. Had the puck go off his stick and into the corner. Backhanded back to the blue line, maintained. McCarr walks the line. Holds and looks in front of the net with a wrist shot that's deflected wide. The rebound swatted at but not cleared. Good play by Drouin to keep it in. Centering pass for McKinnon and a shot. Off an angle by Ratton and was stopped by Samsonov. Puck comes back to the point. Trapped there by Drouin. 
Drew on to the far side. McKinnon trying to get a chance. That was stopped. The rebound is cleared, but not out. McCarr, great play to keep it in. 50 seconds left in the power play. Leafs have had a couple of chances, and another shot taken by McCarr is kicked away by Samsonov. McCarr with it again at the point. To the near side, a one-timer, and that rattled wide of the net by McKinnon. McCarr with it once more. McCarr to McKinnon again. A pass in front. They score. Lekkonen on the doorstep. McKinnon fakes the one-timer and goes to Lekkonen. And on a bad break, on a puck going out of play, a power play goal. And for the first time in this six-game winning streak, the Leafs trail. The Leafs had two opportunities to clear it, couldn't get it out. So McKinnon and Kel McCarr are going to pick up points for McCarr, Joe. That's going to end a seven-game pointless drought, which is the longest of his career. As the Avalanche, first four shots on goal and the first goal of the night. And during this streak, they have only trailed for a total of 23 minutes and 24 seconds, and that was the game against Philadelphia. Played off the boards and back to the blue line. Leafs keeping it into the avalanche zone. A centering pass knocked away by Georgiev. To the point it goes to Lagason. He sends it towards the net. That came off a body and bounced right out in front of the net. But no one there to take advantage of what would have been an open net. Riley back in his own zone. Leafs are wearing their third jerseys. Not a big fan. So cut us a little slack, if you will, here tonight. Here the Avalanche bringing it in over the line on the right wing side. Driving down into the corner was Wagner. Comes around back of the net. Played back to the point. Just kept in there by a Bowen Byram. Into the near corner. Wagner back along the boards. The Leafs are able to steal it. The fourth line out there for Toronto. And Camp gets across the line with a nifty move. Holmberg will send it around the boards, but it'll be trapped at the near point and kept in. Back of the net is Camp. Camp centers in front, and a one-timer is stopped there by Georgiev. Good effort there. Coming down off the wing was Brody looking for his first goal of the season. Marner, a little chip pass now. Matthews in front of the net, and a chance there for Nyes, and that was blocked by Georgiev. Played out and now into the leaf zone. Lilligren punches it right back down into the offensive zone. Matthews can't catch up to it. Neither could Nyes. And out come the Avalanche. A drop pass from Drouin is bottled up by the Maple Leafs and played into the corner then by Matthews, who is able to backhand it out and down the ice. It's going to be wide of the net. And an icing call will come as a result. Uh, I guess we should mention as well, we talked about all the least stats during this winning streak, how good they've been against the West. Well, the Colorado Avalanche, best team at home in the NHL this season. 22 wins, five losses on the year. And listening to Jim Taddy and Dave Feschuk on the pregame show, talking with their special guest on how Colorado's a much different team at this altitude than they have been on the road this season. Now, I've often wondered, they always talk about playing at altitude and everything else, but if both teams were at lower altitude before returning on the very same day, does it have an effect? Here's Taves with a shot. The spot, the rebound in front, and that rang off the iron and has gone up into the green and out of play. It was Jonathan Drew and that had the great opportunity. That comes after Austin Matthews set up Matthew Nyes at the other end. Georgiev came up with a big stop. Maybe it went, I think it might have gone off a sprawling Lagason. Yes, it did. And goes up into the screen Why, out of play. That was an open net, wasn't it? It was. So a big save there from William Lagason as a result. Draw scrummed in the offensive zone for... Carolina as the Leafs play it around to the near wing, but catching up to it first is Devin Taves. The Leafs take it away, and Nylander is away. Nylander in on the right side. Trying to drive in there was uh, Brody. He got spun around. Puck comes back into the slot with a pass, and it's going to come back to the blue line where it's kept in by Toronto. Another pass down into the corner. Domi unable to 
trap it initially, and it is played through center ice, and the Leafs try a quick up, and here's a chance in! And a shot taken by Bertuzzi went off the catching glove of Georgia. Might have caught a little medal, too. Back into the offensive zone for the Maple Leafs, but Jack Johnson is around back of the Avalanche goal. Got it up on the left wing side. Byram in across the line. Pass broken up in the slot. Then cleared away from harm's way by Benoit. It's against the boards and kept in at the blue line. Just kept in. Down into the corner it goes now for Lekkonen. He'll get it back to the point. Cross ice from Byram into the slot area. And a pass is intercepted. And the Leafs trying to push it out on a break. A temp there for uh, Tavares. But it was just intercepted. Avalanche leading one to nothing. Brought in by Byron. Stops up on the half board. Got a shot in and goal. A rebound was there. Knocked aside then by goaltender Samsonov. And the Maple Leafs are starting out of their own end slowly to center before shooting it in and peeling to the bench. Leafs might have got away with a slash there as a Colorado player had his stick snapped in half. Gerard comes to center for the Avalanche and pumps it into the zone. Puck into the near corner. Cogliano gets it back to the point of drive. That didn't make it through the crowd. Down into the round back of the net. That broken stick gets in the way. And then Avalanche players lifted off his skates. Shot in on goal. Deflected wide by Samsonov. Round back of the net. Riley trying to poke it up on the wing. And is just going to get it on the boards and down into Avalanche territory. And a race for it. That is going to be won by Colorado. Samsonov looks sharp early on, doesn't he? Not much he could have done on the power play goal by the Avalanche to start it. By the way, the assist by Kale McCarr. And, and when you read this stat, it's kind of baffling. He is now tied for uh, Colorado Avalanche franchise history for most uh, assists by a defenseman. He's tied with, there might be points. I've written it down better. Can you read your writing? No. No. And I'm not right very often anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> but he's tied. I believe it's points. It is points. All right. Overall. you know he, With who? Who's he tied with? Well, that's what I'm going to ask. Well, I, after all of this, I've forgotten what the question was. Where did you park? <laughs> <laughs> Shot down uh, into the leaf end. I'll, I'll give you a couple hours. All right. Thank you. <laughs> What, for my car or the answer to the yeah, question? <laughs> Here's a pass in front of the net, and the Leafs are able to dig it out. Brody is tripped up, but no call. And the Avalanche get it back into the center ice area, only to have it turned over there, and Matthews turns. Matthews with Marner. Tried to flip it over for Nyes, and then Matthews went for a sprawl. Back come the Avalanche the other way. Cross ice pass, and trying to drop it back, and it didn't work. Ranton and getting it onto the wing. Now McCa uh, McKinnon couldn't do much with it. And it's right back out in center ice. McCarr will stretch things out as the avalanche are changing. All right, 307 points. Kale McCarr. Yep. Ties a franchise record. Most points by a defenseman. Okay. Brought in and a shot just wide of the net off the stick of O'Connor at the point. Into the near boards for Jack Johnson. Couldn't center. It goes around the boards. High in the air to the far side. Maple Leafs get it freed up. And Domi starts away with a lead pass. Oh, he had Nylander in behind the defense. But couldn't get it to him. Is there anyone better in the league than Willie Nylander of finding a way to get behind a defense? And timing it perfectly? Here he, and back in his own zone, makes a good defensive play to break up a pass as it comes to the point. Near side now for Byram, a shot in traffic, blocked, backhanded. That goes off a body and up into the screen and out of play. All right, I'll give you, before we go to commercial break, Kill McCarr is now tied. Somebody for franchise lead for points for defense. Adam Foote. No, but he played with the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm going to give you a hint that will screw you up even more. All right, I'll think about it. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. There's a channel that explodes with gritty guitar texture and perfect pop melodies. Sirius XM Pop Rocks serves up those undeniable 90s anthems, 2K hits, 
And today's fresh pop finds. Pop Rocks. Turn it up now on Channel 6 and anytime in the all-new Sirius XM app. The Power Play with Steve Coolius. I'm with John Cooper, head coach of the Lightning. You've been in Tampa 12 years. Do you think you could run the table where you are? You know, we have something special here. For me personally, as soon as long as the fire still burns and the burn to win uh, and to make this city proud, I will do this as long until they kick me out. And as long as that's happening, if somebody takes me, uh, I'll be there to give them everything I have. The Power Play. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. The Point with Boomer Gordon. The Avs got a little Jekyll and Hyde going on this year. And when they're rolling, they look unstoppable and you think, wow, no one's going to slow down the Avs. And then when it doesn't go well, you go, they're just not deep enough. Nichushkin isn't there right now. We don't know if Landis Gog is going to come back. Yes, Colorado's good, Jake, but unless McKinnon's getting two, three points every night, they don't have the parts. Points with Boomer Gordon. 1 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. The biggest names in the game. Trying to get behind, wrist the line, and walks in, put it between his legs, shoots it, score! And each other play by play on Sirius XM. Simone Benoit limping off after blocking a shot with what looked like his left ankle. Whether it was a little higher than that or not, but it was definitely off the shot as he was tangled up with a Colorado player in front of Ilya Samsonov. This day in history, February 24th, 2002, we were glued to the television sets. Avalanche captain Joe Sack Joe Sackick scored uh, two goals and two assists against the United States in the gold medal game in Salt Lake City. Canada wins its first Olympic hockey gold medal in 50 years. And our very dear friend Bobby Cole calling the play. Played down into the avalanche zone, around on the boards. A shot that was stopped by Georgiev. He didn't see where the rebound went, but it went high into the far corner. Robertson trying to knock the puck free, but out come the avalanche to center. Good back checking by Tavares, and Tavares breaks up the rush to allow Robertson to the puck. Robertson sending it off to the near side for William Lagason. Lagason takes his time. Looks for Morgan Riley, then backpedals behind the Toronto goal to allow the forward line to complete its change. Lagason still with it, now banks it over on the wing, and it's played out at center. Unable to get in over the line was Nyes, but here's Matthews shooting, and that was stopped. The rebound was off the stick and comes back out into the center ice area. Played to the boards and in again. Nyes and Matthews are in pursuit. Played along the corner boards for Josh Manson and lifted high to center ice. McCabe around back of the net. Uses it as a nice shield and then gets it through center, but the puck bounced away from Bertuzzi. And it's back now for Devin Taves to hit a pass up on the left wing. Rantanen gets into the zone. Played it around the wall to the far side. Bertuzzi got there to free the puck up. And it is quickly brought out at center ice by Domi. Up on the wing for Bertuzzi. Bertuzzi couldn't get the puck in deep where Domi was in behind the defense. Now it's underneath one of the fallen Avalanche players. And the Leafs' Brody fires it in on the right side and gets it down deep into the zone. Into the corner now for... The Leafs in back of the net. Nylander curling out. Nylander with a player falling. Gets it back to Riley. Back to Willie. One-timer coming. And a big rebound off a save by Georgiev. Controlled by the Avalanche. Half the period in the books. 1-0 Colorado. Pass in front. They score. Andrew Cogliano on a two-on-one break. And the Leafs have fallen behind 2 to nothing. Right after the Leafs had two or three prime opportunities in the Colorado end. The Avalanche get it back and take off. And Morgan Riley, Joe, sort of loses his footing and gets beat on the right wing boards. As Nathan McKinnon was the Colorado player that took off. And then T.J. Brody, who is usually so good at dropping 
and taking the pass away. I think maybe respecting Nathan McKinnon's shot. Kind of got caught in between. Do I sprawl to pass it? Or do I stand up and try to force him? And McKinnon was able to throw it across the top of the crease to Cogliano. Who by, the, who, by the way, scores his first in 15 games. Fifth of the season for Cogliano. McKinnon has a pair of assists already. And the goal comes at 11.07 of the first period. And it is two to nothing in favor of the Avalanche. So the Maple Leafs are going to have to take a little deja vu here. As they had a nice lead in Toronto evaporate. And they do the same. Uh, reverse the juice a little bit. In Colorado, Lilligren keeping the puck in at the blue line, dropping for Marner. Marner fakes a shot, couldn't find Matthews. Pass was intercepted. Jack Johnson gets it out at center. Eyes missed a hit there and got spun around, but it's cleared down into the offensive zone. Marner to Matthews! Going top shelf, took another whack at it. And Georgiev got a piece of that. Kept alive on the far side by Riley. Dropping it back for Marner. Marner closes, he's right in a goal! Couldn't shoot it and then tried to bank it in off his back. And that didn't work. Play it out at center ice. My goodness, what a chance Marner had. Matthews flipping in too far for Riley. Riley will play it around the boards to the near side. Marner has it intercepted there by McMahon. His shot went wide of the net. Here are the Leafs cycling in front for Tavares. A shot that went off a body in front. And has gone up into the screen and out of play. Leafs what? with a bit of a pushback here after the 2 nothing goal. Yeah, I, I mean, even right before the goal, the Leafs had some pressure. But here, Mitch Barner walks in and around and give Georgiev credit. Stayed right with him to the point where Mitch Barner had nowhere to put it. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. Alpine News Network is here live with one of our superheroes. I just helped Tom with a business loan. He needed to soup up his mechanic shop. Not to brag, but I once modified a car to match my ultra speed. It went so fast, it broke the speed of sound. Approved. At least no one was inside. I hope no one was inside. I guess I'll just stick to approving business loans. Own your home? Need a loan? Alpine Credits can help. Alpine Credits, where homeowners get approved. Just for license 12616. Today, when it comes to following sports, a basic box score just won't cut it. Get the stats behind the stats with NHL Edge. So you won't just see McCarr's time on ice. You'll see where he spent it. You won't just know Matthew's score. You'll know how hard he shot it. And you won't just get OV's shot total. You'll know where he shot it from. Even if they're all from the same place. Know more about every stat, every shift, and every star with NHL Edge. You've heard that sound before. A basketball going off the backboard and in. A bank shot. Well, that's actually the sound of a fan winning a Raptors jersey. That's the sound of a fan getting a signed Raptors basketball. And that's a fan scoring tickets to the NBA Finals. With the Tangerine Bank Shot Contest, every bank shot the Raptors score this season wins a fan a prize. Enter for a chance to win at tangerine.ca slash bank shot. Tangerine, that's forward banking. Avalanche 2, the Leafs don't score, first period. Oh, Nathan McKinnon with the two assists, actually you know, only needed the one to extend a 28-game point streak from the start of the season. The record, by the way, is 40. Wayne Gretzky in an 80-game season at a point in every home game of the Oilers. Here are the Leafs winning the draw, and a shot taken there by Robertson was off the glove of Georgiev. Did we ever get the defenseman? Did we mention uh, oh, Tyson Berry? Tyson uh, Berry. Yeah, we mentioned it. During, yeah, I don't think we break. got it on the air. Tyson yeah. Berry, of all former Leaf, was the yeah. leading point getter for defensemen in the and even, history uh, you know, of the you, team. You start to think back to the, the franchise starting in Quebec in the 80s that somebody might have piled up some points then. But Tyson Berry, who became a Leaf before going to the Oilers and then the Nashville Predators. Hey, off to the right. Yeah, this was a pretty sweet little deal, eh, coming out of Quebec City. Oh, and we got Forsberg, and we got Sackick. Here's a chance in front of the net, and it was tipped just wide as uh, Robertson couldn't get his stick on it. Leafs keep the puck in at the blue line and play it to the side of the net. 
They arrive in Colorado and all of a sudden they're oh we're having Stanley Cup parades. This is pretty neat. Uh. Down the boards into the near corner. Robertson couldn't get to it. Chipped back into neutral ice. Quickly played back out at center. Off the boards and into the zone. That could have been an interference penalty. And, it, and uh, I believe it is. it is. By the way, you talk about moving from Quebec to Colorado. I think the Avalanche should probably thank the Detroit Red Wings as much as anyone for blowing out the Montreal Canadiens one night, 9-1, to one, which was the last game for Patrick Waugh, who a week later became a member of the Colorado Avalanche and a couple of Conn Spice Trophy winners to go with the Stanley Cup. So the Leafs, an important power play. 6.52 left to play in the period. Leafs are second in the NHL in power play proficiency. Colorado 11th in defending. And they'll get it out into the center ice area. And Riley goes back to retrieve the puck. Riley got it off. And a drop pass finds Marner. He sifts in over the line. Works to the left wing side. Stops at the half boards. Now surveys. Gets it back to the point to Riley. Riley to Willie Nylander. Nylander down low for Marner. Stationed off to the side, Bertuzzi. Down low again, Marner. Looking for Bertuzzi, who scores! I could have seen that. Wait a minute, I did. Tyler Bertuzzi stationed off to the side of the net. Marner made one look and then came back to him. And Tyler Bertuzzi has tied or got the Leafs on the board. It's 2-1. to one. And interesting for most of this power play, Joe, Austin Matthews was not in the right wing circle. He was sifting right between the hash marks. And everyone seems to forget about Bertuzzi then, who's stuck down to the left of Georgiev. We saw Bertuzzi replace John Tavares in the number one unit a couple of nights ago. And Tyler Bertuzzi, wouldn't it be nice to get him hot? Just his second goal in the last 24 games. He had a power play goal. That's his fourth power play goal. He had a power play goal against Anaheim in the blowout 9-2 against the Ducks. And the power play was brought to you by your Ontario Subaru dealers. Get more value out of every kilometer in a Subaru, starting with award-winning safety at your local Subaru dealer. Nylander gets it down into the zone and swings it around the boards to the far side centering. Domi was in position, but it was just tipped away from him before he could get a shot delivered to the net. Avalanche back behind their goal. Jack Johnson plays it up on the wing. It's out at center ice. Carried on over the line by Byron. Bowen Byron stops it up. Back to the point to Johnson. Shot coming. Blockered away nicely by Samsonov. Back along the boards to the line, just kept in. Lekin and keeping it in around back of the net. Brody ties up his man. Marner with the loose puck back to Brody. Leafs will stretch things out here as both teams are trying to get a change going. 5-18 to play first period, 2-1 Colorado. Brody with it again, back of his goal. Stops up, swings it around the boards and it'll clear all the way out and down the ice. No one over there. And a nice <laughs> call coming. We didn't. We can't see the whole ice from our perspective. Well, where'd everybody go? <laughs> I don't know if somebody went off, and Brody thought. But I mean, but I mean, in theory, you should have somebody on the boards waiting for it. The Leafs are probably fortunate that it wasn't picked off. Although it is going to cost them a face off in their own zone. Face off one by Toronto. Round back of the net. Brody will look up ice. This time he does have a man and it's tipped down into the zone. Rushing in there after it. Matthews couldn't come up with it. Played up on the wing by Rantanen. It'll come to the line. Leafs are able to keep it in. Flipping it towards the net. Gorgiev just pushes it into the corner. But Nyes is there. Tried to set up Matthews who had the gun loaded. He had the stick up in the air looking for the one timer. But it didn't connect. Brought back in over the line. Pass on the right wing side. Trying to work down the boards. Parise tried to center. That didn't work. Gets it again in the corner. Zach Parise getting it back to the point and it's going to come out at center and all the way down to the Avalanche zone. McKinnon, maybe the fastest skater in the National Hockey League. 
working it in over the line, running into a traffic jam. Leafs are able to flip it out into the center ice area. 4.08 left to play first period. 2-1 to one the score. Avalanche with the lead. Riley curls back, sends it off the boards, had it blocked. Now has to try to protect it on the wall. The puck comes free, and the Leafs have possession, but not out of the zone. That was blocked. McMahon couldn't get it out. A shot rolls in front of the net. Played on the backhand this time and cleared to center ice. It won't be enough for icing. Samuel Girard gets it ahead at center and across the line is O'Connor. Long shot and a juicy rebound off of uh, Samsonov. Trickle just wide of the net when Brody got back there to just tip it wide of the goal. Lilligren starting back for Toronto. Had the puck roll on him a bit. Now plays it ahead at center, but Tavares was headed for the bench and couldn't play the puck. Back in the Colorado zone. Jack Johnson getting it up on the left wing. Chipped in over the line by Parise. Secured by McCabe. Chased by Parise. McCabe gets it to the line and out. Domi gets it ahead on the left wing. Bertuzzi. Bertuzzi driving the net. Goes around back of the goal. Centered in front of the net. And a shot by Nylander almost caromed into the goal. Shot from the sharp angle doesn't make it through. Cleared around back of the net. Now it comes in front. And Georgiev is going to cover up on it. And hold for a faceoff coming in the avalanche zone. The Leafs are on the board but trail 2-1. to one. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. Feel the passion of Major League Soccer all season long on Sirius XM FC. Stupendously magnificent! Every week, hear all the top matches, including every Inter-Miami game. Messi up over and get analysis and insight from our team of experts like former MVP Tony Miola. He looks so confident. It's starting to look so easy. It's Major League Soccer's biggest season ever, and you can experience it on Sirius XM FC 157 and streaming on the all-new Sirius XM app. The Power Play with Steve Coolius. I'm with John Cooper, head coach of the Lightning. You've been in Tampa 12 years. Do you think you could run the table where you are? You know, we have something special here. For me personally, as, soon, as long as the fire still burns, and the burn to win uh, and to make this city proud, I will do this as long until they kick me out. And as long as that's happening, if somebody takes me, uh, I'll be there to give them everything I have. The Power Play. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. The Point with Boomer Gordon. The Avs got a little Jekyll and Hyde going on this year. And when they're rolling, they look unstoppable and you think, wow, no one's going to slow down the Avs. And then when it doesn't go well, you go, they're just not deep enough. Nichushkin isn't there right now. We don't know if Landis Gog is going to come back. Yes, Colorado's good, Jake, but unless McKinnon's getting two, three points every night, they don't have the parts. Points with Boomer Gordon. 1 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. Join me, Ward Stellick, and Scott Laughlin as we recap the night that was on NHL Morning Skate, weekday mornings at 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM 91. It was an agonizing push, but uh, Tyler Bertuzzi has hit the 100 goal plateau for his National Ice Hockey League career by scoring here this evening. Played out at center ice by the Avalanche. But important to remember, Bertuzzi with the Boston Bruins in a seven-game series had 10 points. Here's a chance for Rantanen. His shot went off a stick and wide of the net. Down into the corner. Rantanen with it again. Pass it in front. Lilligren is there to send it high down into Avalanche territory. Leafs are without. Simone Benoit, who limped off. Did you see him back on, Jimmy? Yeah. Okay. They showed him, well, they showed him in front of the bench, so hopefully, yeah. All right. I haven't seen him on the ice as yet. Pass to the left wing side. Caves dropping it back to his defense partner. McCarr trying to play it off. A long shot went wide of the lead goal. I don't think Samsonov even saw that. Round back of the net. They'll play into the corner. Played by Lagason to center ice. Swatted ahead. Matthews couldn't come up with it. Back come the Avalanche with a minute 35 to play. Shot into the Toronto end. 
Puck comes around the board, centering pass in front. Knock just wide of the net with Ross Colton on the doorstep. Colton gets it back to the point. Another shot off a leg into the far corner. Leafs trying to get it freed up on the boards, but don't complete the pass. And now it is on to Max Domi stick and some good, strong stick play by Domi is able to free the puck up. Nylander had to hold the puck because it would have been an offside, but now brings it in, only to have his pass go off a skate to center ice. Rattle back in now by Brody. Mark Giordano not on the trip, still bereavement leave with his dad passing suddenly last week. So he is not in the lineup, and Max Lajoie is also Scratch, Noah Gregor not playing this evening as well as the fourth line that had a great game the other night. 12-1 to 1 in shots on goal and chances, scored two goals, played extraordinarily well. Yeah, and I mean, it helps that you get a 6-1 lead in the second period so you can spread it out. But what that also does is you don't have to play Austin Matthews over 20 minutes. And you saw a lot of the big boys had low ice time totals because it was pretty spread out. Played high to center ice. Less than a minute to go in the period. The avalanche in over the line with a shot to the line. No! Ross uh, Colton was celebrating, but I think Samsonov got a hand back before that. Yeah, that trickled. Got toward the line. Trickled through and went off the post to Samsonov's right, then across the goal line. Ross Colton. The Avalanche called the first penalty of the game, uh, trying to score their third goal to the officials. No, we're watching here. No, we're watching. Yeah. No. And Ross Colton, Lee fans will remember, is a member of the Tampa Bay Lightning. But there's this old rule that the puck has to go into the net before it counts, and Colton might have had. Just for, uh, you know, new hockey fans, how yeah. old is that rule, Mr. Ralph? Uh, have you got any kind of information on that? Uh, I think it came in the third year. Yes, <laughs> It was too high scoring before that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to know. Let's Google, you know. Let's Google that one. Yeah, you know what? I, I used to play a lot of Trivial Pursuit back in the day. That, that question was never brought up. Brought to center ice, 20 seconds left, shot into the leave zone. Down the boards goes McCabe. Ran into a traffic jam back at the net. One of the... That was... Uh, Ryan Johansson, who went sprawling when he caught an edge, shot back down into the avalanche zone. Just five seconds left, and time is going to run out here with the puck in the far corner. So, for the first time in a while, the Maple Leafs are trailing after the first period. He said you have to go back during this winning streak to the game against Philadelphia. They gave up a shorthanded goal in the first period and trailed until midway through the second, and that's when Austin Matthews said, uh, no. I got this, and Matthew scored three, but what the Leafs saw, and, and Colorado saw it at times as well, you're playing in, against a pretty skilled opponent, and uh, thanks to Nathan McKinnon and two spectacular assists, got off to the 2 nothing lead before Bertuzzi cut into it. The Bertuzzi goal, his eighth, comes from Marner and Nylander, so Mitch Marner is just another assist away from continuing on a marvelous streak of uh, consecutive games with multi-assists. Nylander gets the additional assist, the power play goal for Toronto. We'll step aside. Jim Taddy and Dave Festchuk with the first period intermission. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. Let the games begin. On Sirius XM, you get all the sports play-by-play -play you want and all the live sports talk you need. It's always a home game when you listen to the NFL, NHL, NBA, and MLB on the all-new Sirius XM app. How good is that? We fuel your fandom with NASCAR, the biggest college games, PTA, and soccer. And when news breaks, hear instant reaction. we got a big developing story out of Cincinnati. The all-new Sirius XM app. Everything a sports fan needs, all in one place. The Power Play with Steve Coolius. I'm with John Cooper, head coach of the Lightning. You've been in Tampa 12 years. Do you think you could run the table where you are? You know, we have something special here. For me personally, as, soon, as long as the fire still burns and the burn to win uh, and to make this city proud, I will do this as long until they kick me out. And as long as that's happening, if somebody takes me, uh, I'll be there to give them everything I have. 
The Power Play. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. The Point with Boomer Gordon. The Avs got a little Jekyll and Hyde going on this year. And when they're rolling, they look unstoppable and you think, wow, no one's going to slow down the Avs. And then when it doesn't go well, you go, they're just not deep enough. Nichushkin isn't there right now. We don't know if Landis Gog is going to come back. Yes, Colorado's good, Jake, but unless McKinnon's getting two, three points every night, they don't have the parts. Points with Boomer Gordon. 1 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. The Power Play with Steve Coolius. With Tyler Toffoli of the New Jersey Devils. Lindy Ruff, is he still the prankster in the room? Is- Just a quick little funny story. We had a little playoff football pool, and me and Nate Bastion won. Lindy obviously came up to me right away and asked where I was taking him out for dinner. He's been great at it. Just with, with the whole season and being there, uh, talking to all the boys when things aren't going well, and just trying to encourage us to play the up to our potential. It's been good. He's awesome. The Power Play. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. Feel the passion of Major League Soccer all season long on Sirius XM FC. Stupendously magnificent! Every week, hear all the top matches, including every Inter-Miami game. Messi up over and get analysis and insight from our team of experts like former MVP Tony Miola. He looks so confident. It's starting to look so easy. It's Major League Soccer's biggest season ever, and you can experience it on Sirius XM FC 157 and streaming on the all-new Sirius XM app. The NHL trade deadline is coming. Friday, March 8th. Tune in for all-day coverage. Beginning at 7 a.m. with NHL Morning Skate. At 11 a.m., it's Mick Kern and your calls. At 1 p.m., Boomer Gordon brings you the trades as they happen. Then, when the bell rings at 3 p.m. Eastern, Steve Coolius and the power play break it all down. The best analysis, insight, and breaking news. Follow at SiriusXM NHL on X. And tune in to Trade Deadline Day. NHL Network Radio. NHL Network Radio. On demand. On demand with the all-new SiriusXM app. From in the crease to in the locker room. Mr. Rick Tockett, if you're taking a mix of coaches you had that the best of, what is that mix for Rick Tockett? Scotty Bowman behind the bench, tactician. Mike Keenan, a lot of stuff that coaches do now, he did. Jim Schaffel, the father figure. And Mike Sullivan. You know, I still talk to guys like Craig Burby, Travis Green. So, I, you know, there's a mixture, and then you got to find your own niche, right? Sirius XM, NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91. And on your schedule with the Sirius XM app. Join me, Port Stellick, and Scott Laughlin as we recap the night that was on NHL Morning Skate, weekday mornings at 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM 91. He is on TSN 1050 and the Leafs Radio Network. The Leafs live here. Nylander down low for Marner. Stationed off to the side, Bertuzzi. Down low again, Marner looking for Bertuzzi who scores! I could have seen that. Wait a minute, I did. Tyler Bertuzzi stationed off to the side of the net. Marner made one look and then came back to him. And Tyler Bertuzzi is tied or got the Leafs on the board. It's two to one. That's where we stand. Colorado 2, Toronto 1 after 20 minutes of play. TSN after 20 is brought to you by your Ontario Subaru dealers. Unhibernate, redefine winter fun with Subaru, all weather capability. Visit your local Subaru dealer and welcome to Uncommon Winter Confidence. Jim Taddy, Dave Festcheck from the Toronto Star here. Dave Bertuzzi was stapled to the ice there. I mean, he was just camped out on that play, wasn't he? That's what they need from this guy. That's why they brought him in. That's why they paid him the 5.5 million bucks on a one year deal. That's why he got five goals in seven games for the Boston Bruins in the playoffs last year. Cause that's his area, man. He is a net front presence and he hasn't been enough of a presence this season, but I'm sure the Leafs will take the fact that on his, what is it? His 29th birthday today, Jim, uh, Tyler Bertuzzi they got his eighth goal of the season, just his second in the past 24 games, and a very good sign for the Maple Leafs that Bertuzzi was camped out there and doing his job. So let's go back to the start. An unfortunate uh, puck over the glass penalty to Benoit. Seconds into the start, 49 seconds in. Uh, and obviously Colorado scores in the power play, and then Cogliano scores. But those are marvelous setups by McKinnon, both of them. Yeah, he's this guy. We we talked about the Hart Trophy matchup between McKinnon and Matthews in the in the pregame, and Nathan McKinnon has come up to play tonight, has he not? This is this guy is incredible. And as much as we also talked about, you know, the the Avalanche power play had been struggling. Uh, they were two for their previous twenty nine 
That did not look like a power play that was struggling in the opening moments of this game. They were just zinging the puck around. Kale McCarr looked dangerous at the point, and obviously McKinnon very dangerous in setting up that first goal and the second one with that blazing speed down the right wing, setting up uh, Toronto's own uh, Andrew Cogliano uh, for the 2 nothing goal. I think you'll agree with me. It has a playoff uh, style uh, intensity to it. Um, there's a couple things I did notice. Um, one is uh, uh, if you're going to turn the puck over against Colorado, they will pounce on it. I mean, they're, they're down the ice in a second. There's no hesitation there. Yeah, they're a freight train, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> they're scary. And, I mean, McKinnon is kind of the embodiment of that because when, he's, when he is rolling, and you saw it on that second goal, I mean, you know, Morgan Riley and TJ Brody were actually reunited on that play. Uh, they hadn't started the game together, but with uh, – you know, obviously it was inevitable that they would be on the ice together at some point. And this was not a moment where they're probably happy to be on the ice together because McKinnon was storming down the right wing. Riley got a little bit out of position trying to make a play up top. Uh, Brody was basically, you know, helpless as McKinnon uh, just sort of rolled in on him and, and, and picked, uh, picked, picked Cogliano out for the, for the great setup to make it to nothing. That, that's tough speed to deal with, Jim. I don't yeah. care who you are. That, that is elite speed in this league. Uh, the other thing is uh, both teams not afraid of the stretch pass. They're, they're trying the home run play several times at both ends. Yeah, and that's and, and that on the on the Leafs side that can't please Sheldon Keith. I mean, look, if it's open, you go for it. But like the Leafs have a tendency to start believing it's open and then you know overuse it, and that's just not how they've been succeeding here in the six wins that preceded this game. Uh, and the team's been preaching, you know, we got to play more within ourselves. We got to play those short passes, you know, bunt bunt singles rather than home runs, and they've been doing really well with it. Tonight, not so much. They got to get their game back in order here, find themselves. It's notorious when you go to Denver for the first time, uh, and the Leafs only go there once a year, that you're going to be a little out of breath early on. So you give them the first period, Jim, but they got to get their uh, house in order uh, at this intermission for the final 40 minutes. Yeah, I, I actually thought it, in layman's terms that they were trying to out Colorado, Colorado. Would you agree with that? Great way to put it. And that's yeah. just not how the Leafs have been succeeding here. They don't, they don't want to be doing that type of stuff. I mean, look, you can do it once in a while. There, there are plays that are there, plays that present themselves, and you make them. But you don't want those to become the bread and butter. The bread and butter of what this team's been doing well is, is not making home run passes, uh, you know, 100 feet up the rink. The, the bread and butter of what this team's been doing well is moving the puck as a five-man unit with a lot of support and, uh, and playing smart hockey. And we haven't... We we didn't see much of that in the first period, but hey, you, you hang in there with the great power play goal by Bertuzzi, and you know you ha you know you could easily be three nothing if you don't score that one. They they you know Samsonov pulls one off the goal line there as yeah. the period was uh, you know coming to a close. Colton thought he scored. Uh, Lekkinen made a great play there again. Brody struggling a little bit uh, on the blue line. They got to get the blue line back in check here. Uh, you know, so, sort of setting themselves and realize, hey, they're coming at you hard, but the Leafs have, uh, you know, more than enough speed to deal with it if they're in the right position. I, I'll be interested as, as time goes on and as the game progresses that if, if Sheldon Keefe doesn't take her with that lineup, because it, as, as good as it has been over the last couple of games, this is a different team they're playing. Well, this, this is the thing that we, we, we always talk about. Why, why do the Leafs become top-heavy? It's because when you struggle, it's hard to stick with the stuff that was working when yeah. you weren't struggling, right? So this would be an interesting test for Sheldon Keefe. To, to, how, how reactionary, how quick is he back to say, oh, wait a second, core four has got to be in the top two lines, even though the core four on three lines has been a big part of the reason they've won six in a row. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they developed another look. That doesn't mean you stay with it all the time. You sort of tweak no. it to see what happens. Well, that's that'll be the fascinating thing, right? Is yeah. is how you know if you change, will it work, or, or should you stick with what's been working and hope that you know the tide turns here? Well, we're going to find out. But uh, Sheldon Keith's got plenty of options, and the beauty of what he's been facing lately, what he's been getting from his players lately, is that everybody's playing well. So you know, it, like everybody's in a good mood. Everybody feels like they're contributing. So that's a good thing. But hey. Hey, don't, you don't want these guys resting on their laurels, and we all know Sheldon Keefe can be very, very quick on the hook and on the benchings, especially lower down the lineup if guys are not producing. 2-1 Colorado after 20 minutes of play. This is Molson Canadian Leafs Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Leafs Radio Network. Unhibernate, verb. 
to laugh in the face of snow because you drive a Subaru. As in, when I unhibernate, I have the roads all to myself because my Subaru has symmetrical full-time all-wheel drive and others don't. Or, the award-winning safety in my Subaru means I can unhibernate all winter while my neighbors stare longingly from their bedroom windows. Or my favorite usage, I'm going to unhibernate this winter by visiting my local Subaru dealer today. Welcome to Uncommon Winter Confidence. From the biggest stadiums to the coziest holes in the wall. From house parties to porch hangs to pride celebrations. From your favorite fuss shop to your local Indian spot. From noodle bars to sports bars to salsa bars. There's a Molson with your name on it. Canadian Ultra XL. Molson. Everyone in. Must be legal drinking age. Breaking story from Alpine News Network. Ron is a teacher helping bright minds, but this time he needed help. Alpine credits and a cosmic superhero with a debt consolidation loan. She conjured a magic book, Debt Consolidation 101. Lesson 1, consolidate debt into one low monthly payment. Lesson 2, nothing. It's a short book. Own your home, need a loan? Alpine credits can help. Alpine Credits, where homeowners get approved. Just for license 12616. Canadian Blood Services is pleased to share some important news. Now even more of us can make all the difference to patients across Canada. If you lived or spent time in the United Kingdom, Republic of Ireland or France during the mad cow disease outbreak, you may now be eligible to donate blood and plasma in Canada and help ensure that patient need will continue to be met now and into the future. Visit blood.ca or download the Give Blood app to learn more. Together, we are Canada's lifeline. Things are heating up with Sunwing Vacations. Great all-inclusive packages to paradise like the Dominican Republic. Home to some of the world's best beaches like Bavaro Beach. And once-in-a-vacay eco-adventures to try. Ever climb a waterfall? Take your pick of all-inclusive hotels to fit your style better than a new swimsuit. You can change the season in the Dominican Republic. Because when you save more, you explore more with your travel agent or... At Trillium Health Partners, we're ready to see you. Not just as a patient, but as a person. A person who needs innovative care with a human touch. A person with a life, with hopes, and with fears. At Trillium Health Partners, we'll see the whole you. Our nurses, our doctors, and our staff. Because when we care for the whole person, our whole community gets stronger. Trillium Health Partners, we see you. Learn more at weseeyou.ca. The Out of Town Scoreboard brought to you by Maple Toyota. Build your next dream Toyota at Maple Toyota. And check out Maple Toyota's pre-owned inventory arriving daily. It's time to Toyota. Visit mapletoyota.com. Here's what we have in the third period. Washington and Florida tied at 1. End of the first, Golden Knights 1-0 over the Senators. End of the first, Bruins and Canucks scoreless earlier today. Detroit 6-1 over St. Louis. Devils defeated the Habs 4-3. Lightning got by the Islanders 4-2. Rangers got by the Flyers 2-1. Later tonight, Dallas in Carolina. That'll start in mere minutes. The Flames in Edmonton. Predators visiting San Jose Wild in Seattle. And the Ducks visiting the LA Kings. In our game, 2-1 for Colorado over the Leafs after 20 minutes of play. This is Molson Canadian Leafs Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Leafs Radio Network. Fuel your fandom when you listen to live sports on the all-new Sirius XM app. It's deep, it's going, yes. and it is gone! Yes. It is Bethlehem at the bank! Hear the games you just can't miss. Caitlin Clark is the NCAA's all-time scoring leader. And get closer to the teams you love wherever you are. Connor McDavid wins the game for Edmonton. The action you crave is just a tap away. Live sports. Live on the all-new Sirius XM app. You gotta love sports. The Power Play with Steve Coolius. I'm with John Cooper, head coach of the Lightning. You've been in Tampa 12 years. Do you think you could run the table where you are? You know, we have something special here. For me personally, as soon as long as the fire still burns and the burn to win uh, and to make this city proud, I will do this as long until they kick me out. And as long as that's happening, if somebody takes me, uh, I'll be there to give them everything I have. The Power Play. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. The Point with Boomer Gordon. The Avs got a little Jekyll and Hyde going on this year. And when they're rolling, they look unstoppable and you think, wow, no one's going to slow down the Avs. 
And then when it doesn't go well, you go, they're just not deep enough. Nichushkin isn't there right now. We don't know if Landis Gog is going to come back. Yes, Colorado's good, Jake, but unless McKinnon's getting two, three points every night, they don't have the parts. Points with Boomer Gordon. 1 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. Feel the passion of Major League Soccer all season long on Sirius XM FC. Stupendously magnificent! Every week, hear all the top matches, including every Inter-Miami game. Messi up over and get analysis and insight from our team of experts like former MVP Tony Miola. He looks so confident. It's starting to look so easy. It's Major League Soccer's biggest season ever, and you can experience it on Sirius XM FC 157 and streaming on the all-new Sirius XM app. Join me, Ward Stellick, and Scott Laughlin as we recap the night that was on NHL Morning Skate, weekday mornings at 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM 91. Leafs trail 2-1 to one after 20 minutes of play in Denver, Colorado. Oh, I do have a little shout-out here. Oh, a Somebody, shout-out. A uh, big fan of yours is listening in Newark, New Jersey. Newark? Lovely downtown Newark? A uh, little fellow named Frank Corrado. Oh, Frankie. Corrado. Corrado. <laughs> also with the uh, the same company. Oh. The knowledge of Corrado? Uh, yeah. Corrado? Oh. <laughs> I I, yeah, Frank, I don't recall him. Yeah, Frankie did the uh, the New Jersey Montreal game for TSN oh, this afternoon. Oh, and so he's listening in, home. is he? Yeah, apparently okay. on the tarmac, and has not been told. Sir, phones off. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But safe travels, Frankie, and hopefully we see you soon in the next week or so. Two to one in favor of the Avalanche here to start the uh, second period. And uh, the draw won by the Avalanche and the puck down to the left. Leafs defend the goal to the right. Brody getting the puck ahead. Saucered ahead for Matthews. He couldn't come up with it. Austin Matthews has a 13-goal lead in the Rocket Richard Trophy as he has it around back of the net. Strides into the near corner. Cycles it back behind for Nyes. Nyes in a battle for it. Got it to Marner. Back to the point, but unable to keep it in Benoit. And it comes to center ice. Is there a possibility that Austin Matthews could win not one, not two, but three pieces of hardware at the end of this season? The Rocket Richard, you would fear, is a lock. But the Hart Trophy, most valuable player, and I would suggest the Selkie Award as the best defensive forward. Might have to be the Patrice Bergeron Award eventually. Yeah, it might. Yeah, played in and a shot goes wide of the lead goal down on the right wing boards, trapped there by Manson to his defense partner. He gets it returned. Now had it roll off his stick and the Leafs just play it out. Max Domi kind of was stationary there. If he'd have got another stride underneath him, he might have been able to flip it by Manson and then beat him to the puck. Boy, Willie Nylander might have been open on the right side as well. Clear into the line, but not out. Kept in at the blue line by Manson. Leafs get it in the near corner, and McCabe turns. His pass to an open wing, but Benoit circling back now rings the boards with it to get it out at center. And the Leafs have it with Tavares in across the line. Tavares. Plays around the boards to the far point. Kept in there, but it goes off a skate. It's going to carry him all the way back into neutral ice, forcing Morgan Riley back into his own zone. Lagason gets it ahead. Left wing feed Tavares. Nicely taken off the skates to shoot it in. Puck down into the corner boards. Pushed out at center ice, and the Leafs go back for it. Riley up on the wing. Robertson, a nice pass up on the right side, but Tavares couldn't handle it cleanly. He's in around back of the net with it centered. Comes back, and it bounced right over the stick of Brody and has gone all the way back down into the Toronto zone. Boy, and he had a lane to the net. Did he ever? Left point. Here's Holmberg getting it in front of the goal. The shot by Reeves was knocked aside as Georgiev may have just got a piece of that. Pontus Holmberg against the boards along with the Lilligren tying the puck up. Reeves is over there as well. Stuffed down the boards by Holmberg. Nice job. Got it to Reeves. Sent around the boards to find Brody. 
Brody sending it off the boards back of the net. Pontus Holmberg to the blue line, but it's going to be bounced out at center ice, and the Leafs will have to scamper back and get into defensive position, and they do, and send it right back in over the line. Leafs uh, have really got to be careful at how the Colorado defensemen like to pinch down the boards. How nice. Trying to get it across into the slot area. Had it knocked off his stick. Lead pass out at center ice. Brought in by McKinnon. McKinnon down into the corner. Chased by Benoit. McKinnon works to the far point with it. Long shot. Goes wide. The rebound. Knocked out of the air off the end boards there by Samsonov. Pretty good play. Leafs now with the puck in their own end. Benoit playing it off the boards through center and down into... Colorado Territory, no icing. It is 2-1 Colorado here with about four minutes played in period number two. Devin Taves gets it ahead. Brought on at center by Ross Colton. He'll send it into the Toronto zone. Played along the boards by the Leafs. Bertuzzi is able to get it back out to neutral ice. Turning with it is Girard. Got it ahead. That brought a crowd along the near boards, and the Leafs get it in over the line with Nylander. Had a man in front, and he did. Sweeping it out there, but Domi couldn't get his stick on it. I think Max was more surprised than anyone. Back come the Avalanche in with a chance. That's blocked. Back in behind the net, Ross Colton. Colton trying to slide it around the boards. It'll go to the point. Near into the slot area now. Here's an O'Connor shot. Deflected wide. Leafs get back to uh, knock away a possible rebound. And Riley turns in his own zone. Riley will launch it high to center. Leafs getting a change of players. Likewise, the Avalanche. Manson with a quick up. That got down into the Leafs zone. Pushed along the boards. Brought out at center. Tavares got it ahead. Bobby McMahon! And the wrist shot is into the glove of Georgiev. And right. there'll be a face-off coming in the Colorado zone. Great burst of speed down the left wing side by McMahon. Seems so odd now what we just witnessed. Goaltender making a glove save without going down on the butterfly. And Georgiev never dropped. And I think McMahon was trying to... Bend. Kind of anticipating that Georgiev would be on the way down and get it up over the glove. Fourth line is looking again tonight. Yeah, they? they have. Now, the New York Rangers have brought up a young man with some sizable size who's been involved in the fisticuff department on three separate occasions. Including, what, two seconds into his first shift against Matt Martin? Yes. And today against uh, Delorier with the Flyers. The Leafs entertain the Rangers next Saturday. Not that it, this is a Ty Domi, Bob Probert advance notice match, but it might be there. Puck down in the corner. Ryan Reeves has had two fights this year. Into the far side. Tavares tried to one-hand it out in front. Too well covered, but got some assist. A wraparound attempt coming in front. The net was partially knocked off its mooring, but the Avalanche get it out into the center ice area. Two to one, Colorado. Down into the corner goes McCarr. Long shot goes deflecting in along the boards. Leafs are able to punch it out and get it cleared up. And now Benoit very quickly off the glass to center. It was Benoit's penalty for delay of game that got the avalanche on the board early in this one. Puck around the boards into the Toronto zone. Chopped at there by Nyes. He doesn't get it past the defense of McCarr. McCarr got it freed up for Wagner, who got it in a little deeper, but Lagason is able to play it ahead. Reeves getting it out at center ice. And down into the zone it goes, and Morgan Riley hustles after it. Now Pontus Holmberg got it in front of the net, but it didn't reach Reeves for a shot on goal. McCarr will bring it back the other way and just play it into the Toronto end. Seven minutes played in the second period. Two to one, Avalanche. Leafs trying to make it a perfect road trip. Down into the corner it goes now. Here's McCarr and McKinnon, rather, getting it back to the blue line where it's intercepted. Maybe an interference call there as uh, Nye's got 
locked on to by Lekkonen. But it is shot now down into the Toronto zone and an icing call. No penalty. I mentioned earlier this season, the Leafs blew a 3-0 lead, first period lead to the Colorado Avalanche, ended up losing 5-3. And even though they're 8-0-3 in their last 11 in Colorado, two years ago, the Leafs went into Colorado. Jack Campbell was a net for Toronto. They had a 3-0 lead, faced the starting goaltender, and ended up losing that one 5-4 in overtime. A bouncing puck to the side, brought out now by McCarr, or McKinnon rather. McKinnon in over the line, stops it up, got it into the slot, turned over by the Leafs, shot out and down the ice. Icing call coming. Boy, that's how you're just so amazed at players like Nathan McKinnon. Point shot from the Leafs, rebound, and right away, McKinnon's got it. It's an odd man rush going back into Toronto's end. You know, it seems His like... His acceleration yeah. is just something to behold, isn't it? Yeah, and it was Willie Nylander was back as one of the defenders. And you know what? Then you make the right play. You get the puck in your stick, just get it out. Long shot. That took a piece out of uh, Samsonov as it may have been redirected just in front of the net and went off his shoulder. Leafs in the near boards, get it out into neutral ice, but it is Bowen Byron going back into his own territory. Played out at center ice. Brought on now by the... Here's a chance and a goal. Great save by, by Samsonov. As O'Connor split the defense and was in behind. Back into the corner for Ross Colton. Back to the point it goes. Byron with a shot that deflected wide. Good pressure here from the Avalanche. Another shot. Breaks the stick of the Leaf defender. Now it is Byron into the slot. Byron getting it to the point. It's Bertuzzi who is without the stick. To the far side, Johnson. Wraparound attempt doesn't work. Leafs trying to get a handle on the puck, but can't. Ross Colton gets it again. The shot coming. Bertuzzi trying to block it. Back again to the point. Here's Byron again, and that time Bertuzzi did block it, but that's taken a bite out of him. Good pressure. Another shot. Oh, and a pad save made by Samsonov. Oh! Mackinac, the Leafs were under pressure and Ilya Samsonov bails them out with a great pad save and a smother. Well, it's such a fluke that Bertuzzi breaks his stick. It's a cross-ice pass in the Leafs zone. Bertuzzi just tries to knock it down out of midair and he obviously gets a chunk of it, but the stick breaks and then it's Bertuzzi blocking shots, followed by Ilya Samsonov maybe keen maybe his best save of the night. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. Get the official NHL app to watch, read, and listen to all the deeks. All I can say is absolutely wow. All the sauce. All the saves. Stop from Bozolowski. All the hits. All the snipes. All the sellies. He scores! Unbelievable! All the hockey. If it's hockey, it's here. Listen to every NHL game for free now with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Download the official NHL app now. Let's get jerseys. Let's get jerseys. Right now, become a Tangerine client with a savings account and you could get a free Raptors jersey. We want jerseys. Finally, a savings account worth cheering for. Jerseys. 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 Find out how to score a jersey at tangerine.ca slash Raptors. Tangerine, that's forward banking. Available to new clients who open and fund an eligible account while supplies last. Conditions apply. Who says kids get to have all the fun during March break? Say no to building a snowman. And shell yeah to building sand castles with Sunwing Vacations. We've got what you're looking for out of paradise. Like water parks, crystal clear waters, white sand beaches, and more. Not to mention a host of breathtaking destinations, each as beautiful as the last. When you save more, you can explore more with your travel agent or... The Leafs trailing 2-1 to one to the Colorado Avalanche. Are you surprised Jared Bednar has pretty much decided to go head-to-head? -head. Matthews and McKinnon having the last change, so it's his choice. 
Shot from the point to flex high and goes into the near corner in behind Samsonov. Was that one of the rules made in the third year of the, the sport? Which one? Uh, matching lines are being able to put out line against No. Oh. Now there's Ma thick laws for the Leafs. Okay. Matt gets it down into the corner. Played it around on the far boards. Lekkonen got it into the slot, but it was intercepted by Bobby McMahon, who gets it into neutral ice. The Leafs are trying to change. Riley pushes it back out at center. Didn't hook up with Tavares. Avalanche shoot it right back in again. Benoit to Riley. Riley with a long stretch pass and in over the line, just out of the reach of Marner, who had broken in behind. But now here, the Avalanche coming back the other way, but a bad pass is intercepted by Toronto. Marner looking to find Matthews. Bouncing puck cleared away from the lead sniper, and it's up on the right side with McCarr. McCarr in on the right wing. McCarr goes into the corner to play the puck to himself. Still has it. Centering pass. Good back checking done there to relieve the stick. And now Matthews comes out at center and plays it down into the avalanche zone. All right, Matthews, I think, just took an elbow to the face. Here the avalanche in over the line. Dropping for McKinnon. Spins into the far boards. Nine and a half minutes to go. Second period. Matthews. Got it ahead. A pass ahead for Pontus Holmberg. He's able to muscle the puck out at center. Can't control it, though. Brought back in by Cogliano. Down into the corner. It goes for Chris Wagner. Wagner chases after it in the near boards. Run to the boards then by David Camp. The puck back into the corner boards. That has it pinned up there with a maze of skates. Trying to dig it free is Kivarianta, uh, but it's uh, still knocked into the boards area. Grabbed off by Wagner. Played around the wall to the far side. It'll come back to the hole. Almost a big break there for the Leafs. Ryan Reeves had the defenseman fall down, and Reeves would have been away to the races. Now here the Avalanche back into the attack, working down into the corner against Lilligren. Good play by Brody to deflect a pass. Then he knocks his man down, but the puck is kept in with a shot. Bouncing puck in goal crease area. Knocked wide of the net by Samsonov with the whistle. A quick one. And it benefits the Leafs. Boy, now, now do we have a penalty coming up? It almost looked like the referee was signaling maybe a hooking call. As Leafs got caught running around in their own zone. But Ilya Samsonov was good and lucky within seconds. As he... Got a piece of the original shot with his blocker, and then the rebound was swept up under his pads, went through him, and out the other side. But as you mentioned, the benefit of the quick whistle. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. Hey, what's going on? This is Kevin Hart, host of Gold Mines on Laugh All Love Radio, Channel 96. Here to tell you about the brand new series, XM Act. Check out my new personal page on the fully redesigned app to see all the places that you can hear me and also keep up with all the latest episodes and more. Just search Kevin Hart in the app to find me and then keep exploring to add all your Sirius XM favorites and your new discoveries to your library. The brand new Sirius XM app is helping you find and connect with me and the personalities that you know and love from all of the Sirius XM family. The Power Play with Steve Coolius. With Tyler Toffoli of the New Jersey Devils. Lindy Ruff. Is he still the prankster in the room? Is Just a quick little funny story. We had a little layoff football pool, and me and Nate Bastion won. Lindy obviously came up to me right away and asked where I was taking him out for dinner. He's been great at it, just with, with the whole season and being there, uh, talking to all the boys when things aren't going well and, and just trying to encourage us to play the up to our potential. It's been good. He's, he's awesome. The Power Play. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. The NHL trade deadline is coming. Friday, March 8th. Tune in for all-day coverage. Beginning at 7 a.m. with NHL Morning Skates. At 11 a.m., it's Mick Kern and your calls. At 1 p.m., Boomer Gordon brings you the trades as they happen. Then, when the bell rings at 3 p.m. Eastern, Steve Coolius and the power play break it all down. The best analysis, insight, and breaking news. Follow at SiriusXM NHL on X. And tune in to Trade Deadline Day. NHL Network Radio. NHL Network Radio. On demand. On demand with the all-new SiriusXM app. The biggest names in the game. Trying to get behind, wrist the line, and walks in, put it between his legs, shoots it, score! And each of them play by play on Sirius XM. Joe Bowen and Jim Ralph. 
With you here this evening, Jim Taddy, along with Dave Festchuk on our intermissions, Owen Hall, Matt Cardadiero, running the operation for us. Here at our studios, as it is a 2-1 to one avalanche lead. Thoughts are only 5-3 here in the second period. Feels like more, doesn't it? It, it does. 5-3 Colorado. I would suggest that's probably a good thing for the Maple Leafs. Bertuzzi, who left after making that shot block, is back on the Toronto bench after scoring his 100th career goal to cut the lead in half, 2-1 to one here. We're in the second period. Here's McKinnon driving, and then a spinning backhand went wide of the net. Rantanen trying to keep it in. It gets by everybody to Devin Taves. His pass is intercepted. Domi coming to center. Works to the line on a crisscross to drop to Bertuzzi. Bertuzzi took a shot. That went off the shoulder of Georgiev and went straight up in the air. I don't think he knew where it was, do you? No, and, and Bertuzzi, like a lot of players, will try that sharp angle shot. Try to go short side. Puck back down in the Toronto end. Lagason got it up on the wing. We mentioned last night. Was it last night? Or the night before? Here's the Av coming in on goal. A stop made by a Samsonov, and he's going to cover up on it. Well, that was Zach Parise that drove to the net from the right wing boards. The Leafs in the last two seasons have used 20, 20 different defensemen. Most in the National Hockey League. And when you think about Simon Benoit, Max Lajoie, William Lagason, I mean, the, the list goes on here this season. Well, and Connor Timmins is out with Mono now. Yeah. Toronto Marley's winning again today, 5-1, and it was Dennis Hildeby who had a yeah. good game, and Joseph Wall gave up just one goal. In 33 shots, I believe it was last night. 37. Dude. 37. Like I said, I thought it was 33, but it might be 37. No, it was 33. No, it was 37. <laughs> 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 the, the way they change the well, NHL the between oh, yeah. periods. Oh, here's the avalanche of centering pass. Knocked away by Marner. Spreading ahead. And Tavares is skating through center ice. Trying to catch up McKinnon. Tavares a little stutter step. Able to come away with it. Got it back to the point. Near side it comes to Brody. Can't shoot it at the net but has played it along the boards for the Leafs. And now here's Marner in front for Tavares. A shot. High puck bouncing. And Tavares on the wing here with Marner and Matthews. Here's Marner to the line. Just flipped it in over the line but out of the reach of uh, David Camp. Al Camp comes back out over the line, but the puck steered away. Miner able to bring it right back in again, but again, it's bogged down, and it is shot down the ice now by Colorado. Whoa. Low is right. That wasn't icing for some ungodly reason. That was, now, a, that goes, was a late wave off, too. Sure it? was. Played down into the avalanche zone, though. See, if maybe it benefits the Leafs. Camp against the boards, looking for Holmberg. That doesn't work. McCabe unable to track down a loose puck the first time, but does the second. Sends it around into the right wing corner. Cut off there by Camp. Back of the net. Reeves got a piece of his man. Riley sends it back again around the boards. Punching it down to the line. And maintaining it now is Holmberg. Sends around back of the avalanche goal. Leafs trying to get a change going. 418 to play here in the period. No scoring thus far. Here's a chance now for a shot. Down is Samsonov. He had it underneath him, but no whistle was forthcoming. Maybe we'll get another look at this. Was it in behind him? Oh, yeah. I, I think it was rattling around close to the goal line. All right. Here's a two-on-one for the Leafs on the other side. Nylander, a backhand shot. Loose puck in front. They bang away at it. They score! Red hot Tyler Bertuzzi has tied the game with his second goal. Boy, you may circle that as the TSN turning point. The Leafs narrowly escape an opportunity at one end as it got in behind Ilya Samsonov. He didn't know where it was. Riley and Domi came in to help. The Leafs get it back. 
and turn it back the other way. It looked like they missed their opportunity when the Nylander pass was blocked to Max Domi. Came back to Nylander, who chips it back towards the net. Georgiev makes the save, but Tyler Bertuzzi picks up the rebound and is second of the night as this game tied 2-2 with 5.15 to go in the second period. How about the last two games, Mr. Ralph? McCabe, Camp, Domi, Domi, Holmberg, Matthews, oh, two from Bertuzzi. Is that secondary scoring? Yep. Turned out they had it all along. <laughs> Flipped in over the line. Ninth of the year, second of the game for Tyler Bertuzzi. Yeah, and we whistle. get a whistle here. I don't know if was the puck knocked down with a high stick. I saw the motion there. Or if we got a penalty coming up. Anyway, you slice it. The Leafs have battled back from a two-goal deficit after blowing a three-goal lead at home against Colorado. And I'm going to guess Tyler Bertuzzi probably scores an average of two and a half feet from the net. And that's exactly where you want them. Dave Andrichuk, you're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. From the biggest stadiums to the coziest holes in the wall. From house parties to porch hangs to pride celebrations. From your favorite fuss shop to your local Indian spot. From noodle bars to sports bars to salsa bars. There's a Molson with your name on it. Canadian Ultra XL. Molson. Everyone in. Must be legal drinking age. There are many peculiar words in the English language. Words like solivigant, peregrinate, nemophilus, peripatetic, and conviviality. Yet, there is no word for getting the most out of winter in your Subaru, thanks to symmetrical full-time all-wheel drive and X-Mode. Until now. We call it unhibernate. As in, while your neighbors stay home, you'll be unhibernating all winter in your Subaru. So peregrinate to your local Subaru dealer today and welcome to Uncommon Winter Confidence. Things are heating up with Sunwing Vacations. Great all-inclusive packages to paradise like the Dominican Republic. Home to some of the world's best beaches like Bavaro Beach. And once-in-a-vacay eco-adventures to try. Ever climb a waterfall? Take your pick of all-inclusive hotels to fit your style better than a new swimsuit. You can change the season in the Dominican Republic. Because when you save more, you explore more with your travel agent or... Maple Leafs 2, the Avalanche 2. Tyler Bertuzzi scoring a pair of goals for the Maple Leafs. You know what uh, today is? February 24th? Yes. What? You just said it. It's February 24th. Yeah. <laughs> you know who the birthday boy is? No. Tyler Bertuzzi. Well, he's starting to mature. <laughs> <laughs> Here's <That's> shot <laughs> by me. <laughs> you know... <laughs> Could you just be serious for once? Just once. I don't ask for a lot. You know, just let me get through a game without you being you. <laughs> 27 years later, let's give it a shot. <laughs> Here's a novel idea why we try this. <laughs> uh -huh. Tyler Bertuzzi's birthday. Why not unwrap two? Hey. I don't believe he has ever scored three on his birthday. On his birthday. <laughs> in well, not in Colorado. <laughs> in Colorado or the National Ice Hockey League. Here's Nylander off the faceoff win. Plays it down into the corner. One handed along the boards then and maintain. Good play, Bertuzzi. Trying to drive the net, dropping it back. Nylander with a shot. That's juggled. Knocked away from the goaltender. Play continues. Drop pass for Nil Willie and a shot. Big rebound in front. Domi! Right into the chest of Georgiev. And it's cleared by the Avalanche to center. And the Leafs have got some buzz going now. Avalanche get it out into neutral ice. 4.06 to play in the period. 
Wood sends it towards the net. A bouncing puck that Matthews was able to knock away. And now he has it on his stick. Getting it out at center. Knocks Wood to the ice. Works it off the bank now for Matthews. To Marner. To Matthews. Shooting. Oh, and it looked like he had Georgiev guessing there. And it just missed low to the stick side. That was the same spot, right? Stick side, just above the pad, and it handcuffed Georgiev. He yeah, didn't I, get into the butterfly at all. I, I think he was guessing maybe short side, glove side. Oh, you know what? It oh, just, that just went does off a stick. Go okay. off a stick. Now, all of that great thought process for naught. <laughs> Back to the point. Leafs win the draw. Down into the corner. Marner chipping it along. Nice. Trying to free it up for Matthews. Has it up against the wall. McCarr piling into Matthews. Matthews trying to use that wonderful wand of his to pry it free. McCarr's got a, well, a little tough to have three hands on that stick. Now Marner comes into some ice in the slot area. Still with it. Curls back towards the blue line. Now lets the shot go and scores! Nye says he didn't touch it. This will be Mitch Marner's. And the Maple Leafs have taken the lead. 3-2. to two. Boy, Marner's ability to delay when he's under fire. Has the puck left wing boards inside the Colorado line. Looks like he's going to throw it to the right D. No. He had that option with McCabe. And then waits, waits. Finally sifts back to the middle of the ice and throws it to the net on a wrist shot that Matthew Nyes maybe didn't touch. But boy, did he provide the perfect screen. As it flutters past the Colorado goaltender to give the Leafs their first lead of the night. Second period brought to you by Molson. Whether it's Canadian Ultra Export or XL, there's a Molson with your name on it. And the Leafs have scored three unanswered goals after surrendering the opening two. But his ability to hold on, you keep thinking, and, and you know when you're defending against him, you're thinking, okay, now he's got to play it now. He's got to do this. He's got to, you know, and then he takes off from the board, circles back towards the point. And just wrists it in. Boy, Nice was right there. Yeah. Draw one by the Avalanche. Point shot to flex wide and back of the Toronto goal. Now, through all of this, the Maple Leafs have lived a charmed life as far as Ilya Samsonov is concerned. They've had pucks in behind him. Now a drive to the net, and Samsonov stands his ground. Boy, somehow, out at yeah. the top of the crease and makes a good save. Yeah, Kale McCarr, I'm... I don't know if he tried to drag it around Samsonov, and then Samsonov simply stuffed it out as Makar dancing in from the left point, maybe trying to go five hole. And Samsonov was able to shut him down. 25-20, the shots favoring the Leafs. 2.30 left to play, second period. Toronto three, Colorado two. Leafs trying to continue some real dominance in the Mile High City where they are 8-0-3 in their last 11 visits. Leafs get it up on the boards and get it out at center for Camp. Tried to lay it ahead for Pontus Holmberg. That didn't work. And then the Leafs are able to chop it down into Avalanche territory. Fourth, Here's McCarr. Fourth line on against the McKinnon line. Out at center ice now with a pass in on the left wing. McKinnon taken to the boards. Puck comes back and it is knocked out at center ice. And Reeves will force things back into the avalanche zone. He thinks better of it. And now uh, is going to stay out there. The fourth line remains as it's shot into the Toronto zone. Played along the boards by Lagesson. Lagesson knocked down on the play. The puck comes back into the slot now for Johansson. He was too well covered there by Camp. Camp bodies his man. Long shot in traffic. Blocked. Still freed up. Morgan Riley takes it to safety. And he gets it into the near corner. And Lagesson's going to get it out for him. It's going to bounce the length of the rink. But a generous wave of the linesman to deny icing. Minute 20 to go in the period. Whale of a hockey game from the Pepsi Center. Play it around the boards to the near side. And the Leafs break it out. 
Bertuzzi, who has a pair on the night, gets it down into the zone. Puck along the boards and back out at center, and now McKinnon works in over the line, dropping it back for Ranton, and a shot! And a blocker save made there, and a good one made by Samsonov. Puck back into the neutral zone. Less than a minute to play in the period. Chipped along the wall and pushed back into Colorado territory. Almost stolen there by Matthews. And the Avalanche working it out at center. Played it in the backhand by Josh Manson. A shot off a stick but well wide of the net. Comes back to the blue line. Near side. Marner failed to redirect it. But there it's grabbed off by Toronto and pushed ahead. Nice breaking in on the left wing. Matthews going to the front of the goal. He got the shot away but Georgiev made the save. Boy, that uh, if there was a little bit of space between the pads. Matthews would have found it. But Georgiev was able to get down on the butterfly and seal it off. Great pass by Nyes. Good yeah. hustle down yeah. the wing. Great great effort by Matthew Nyes. Before that, Elias Samsonov stops one off the shaft of his stick as it went harmlessly wide. By the way, for Georgiev, the most used goaltender in the National Hockey League this year. This is his 48th appearance, which is first in the NHL. Last year, it was 66 games. Well, you think he's playing some back-to-backs? He did not. He did have the night off when the Avalanche played in Detroit a couple of nights ago in a 2-1 overtime loss. There's the horn that ends the period. Mitch Marner, after a pair of goals from Tyler Bertuzzi, have lifted the Maple Leafs into a 3-2 lead after 40 minutes. Probably the greatest adversity the Leafs have seen on this road trip was going down to... Stuck to the game plan, and you want to call it secondary scoring, followed by primary scoring as the Leafs up in front. So we will ship it off to Jim Taddy and Dave Festchuk. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. Feel the passion of Major League Soccer all season long on Sirius XM FC. magnificent! Every week, hear all the top matches, including every Inter-Miami game. Messi up over and get analysis and insight from our team of experts like former MVP Tony Miola. He looks so confident. It's starting to look so easy. It's Major League Soccer's biggest season ever, and you can experience it on Sirius XM FC 157 and streaming on the all-new Sirius XM app. The Power Play with Steve Coolius. I'm with John Cooper, head coach of the Lightning. You've been in Tampa 12 years. Do you think you could run the table where you are? You know, we have something special here. For me personally, as soon as long as the fire still burns and the burn to win uh, and to make this city proud, I will do this as long until they kick me out. And as long as that's happening, if somebody takes me, uh, I'll be there to give them everything I have. The Power Play. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. The points with Boomer Gordon. The Avs got a little Jekyll and Hyde going on this year. And when they're rolling, they look unstoppable, and you think, wow, no one's going to slow down the Avs. And then when it doesn't go well, you go, they're just not deep enough. Natushkin isn't there right now. We don't know if Landis Gog is going to come back. Yes, Colorado's good, Jake, but unless McKinnon's getting two, three points every night, they don't have the parts. Points with Boomer Gordon. 1 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. The Power Play with Steve Coolius. With Tyler Toffoli of the New Jersey Devils. Lindy Ruff, is he still the prankster in the room? Is- Just a quick little funny story. We had the little playoff football pool, and me and Nate Bastion won. Lindy obviously came up to me right away and asked where I was taking him out for dinner. He's been great at it. Just with, with the whole season and being there, uh, talking to all the boys when things aren't going well, and, and just trying to encourage us to play the up to our potential. It's been good. He's, he's awesome. The Power Play. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. From in the crease to in the locker room. Mr. Rick Tockett, if you're taking a mix of coaches you had that the best of, what is that mix for Rick Tockett? Scotty Bowman behind the bench, tactician. Mike Keenan, a lot of stuff that coaches do now, he did. Jim Schaffel, the father figure. And Mike Sullivan. You know, I still talk to guys like Craig Burby, Travis Green. So, you know, there's a mixture. And then you got to find your own niche, right? Sirius XM, NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91. And on your schedule with the Sirius XM app. Hey Toronto, I'm David Morissuti, host of the daily Toronto Me Please podcast, Locked On Lease, part of the Locked On Podcast Network on the SiriusXM app. Every weekday, we bring you the latest Leafs news and analysis 
break down all the action, including this game you're listening to right now and preview the next one. We're giving you everything a Leafs fan could want, all in a daily 30-minute podcast. Download Locked On Leafs right now on the SiriusXM app, available with all trials and popular plans, or where you get your podcast. Search Locked On. Leafs. Feel the passion of Major League Soccer all season long on Sirius XM FC. Stupendously magnificent! Every week, hear all the top matches, including every Inter-Miami game. Messi up over here! And get analysis and insight from our team of experts like former MVP Tony Miola. He looks so confident. It's starting to look so easy. It's Major League Soccer's biggest season ever, and you can experience it on Sirius XM FC 157 and streaming on the all-new Sirius XM app. Join me, Ward Stellick, and Scott Laughlin as we recap the night that was on NHL Morning Skate, weekday mornings at 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM 91. Wilson Canadian Leafs Hockey is on TSN 1050 and the Leafs Radio Network. The Leafs live here. Matthews trying to use that wonderful wand of his to pry it free. McCarr's got a well, a little tough to have three hands on that stick. Now Marner comes into some ice in the slot area. Still with it. Curls back towards the blue line. Now lets the shot go and scores! Nye says he didn't touch it. This will be Mitch Marner's, and the Maple Leafs have taken the lead, 3-2. to two. And that's where we stand after 40 minutes of play, 3-2 for the Leafs. Marvelous second period. TSN after 40 minutes, delivered by 241 Pizza. Get a free media one-topping pizza with a $25 minimum purchase before tax and delivery. Online orders only. Visit 241pizza.com. Use the code FREEM for that free medium pizza. Jim Taddy, Dave Festchuk with you. And remember when I said they were trying to out Colorado, out Col- uh, Colorado? Well, they did, didn't they? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And we were sort of uh, condemning them for it after the yeah. first period where they're down to to one. But it, it, they're out Coloradoing or trying to out Colorado, Colorado in another way too, Jim. Because let's face it, last time they played them last month in Toronto, you know the Leafs went up three nothing and Colorado scored five unanswered goals to win wa- going away. Uh, here Colorado goes up two nothing. McKinnon sets up both goals. It's looking like a bit of a mismatch. McKinnon came to play. And you'll remember the last time they were in Toronto, Sheldon Keefe said that, hey, when McKinnon's on the ice and Taves and McCarr are out there, that's not the NHL. That's another league entirely. Um, the Leafs responded to that McKinnon challenge. And now they find themselves in a 3-2 advantage. Three unanswered Leafs goals here. They bent, but they did not break in that second period. And, the, and they finally broke through with two big goals down the stretch. Well, the bending and not breaking really applies to the goaltender Samsonov. You know, most goalies like to tap the post or the crossbar when they're getting a fortuitous bounce. He has to tap the goal line. There's been three or, <laughs> three or four of those where you go, how does this not go in? Yeah, so true. I mean, he pulled he pulled one off the line in the first period when Ross Colton had his arms in the air as though he scored, and he was he was magic uh, in terms of just you know blocking off that goal line uh, early on in this period. Because let's face it, you know before the Leafs went up three two in the final five fifteen there with Bertuzzi scoring his second of the night and Marner scoring for the point. It had been all avalanche. Like, they had the Leafs hemmed in on a number of occasions. There was that 50-second hem in uh, where the fourth line, Colorado's fourth line, uh, had Toronto's fourth line in the zone. And if not for Samsonov stoning the avalanche on a couple of uh, really good opportunities, who knows what might have happened. Bertuzzi had a nice uh, shot block a little earlier than that. So the Leafs definitely did some heavy lifting in their own zone before they finally broke through with those two goals late. Well, and even on the Bertuzzi second goal, I mean, there, there's a flurry around Samsonov. I don't know how that puck doesn't go in. It's behind him, but they can't jam it in, and, and it goes down down the ice, and they score. I mean, I, I, you know, we talked about the Colorado transition game. The, the Leafs have matched that. Yeah, you're right, and that was a great Nylander play to set up that Bertuzzi goal uh, with the way, look, it was an opportunistic play. You're right. The Leafs were not looking good there, and Samsonov was the hero on that play, keeping the puck out somehow, but the Leafs used their speed. That that line with uh, Domi and Nylander skating together on the rush is, is a formidable line. 
with great speed and good opportunity to get to the front of the net to be able to jam in that rebound because he doesn't have the speed of Nylander uh, nor Domi, but somehow he, he wheeled his way down there and was in the right position. As we talked about on the first goal in, on the power play where he's standing next yep. to the goal mouth and, and jams one in, uh, he re, he jammed in that rebound in uh, to great effect, and it's turning out to be a really nice birthday for Mr. Bertuzzi. Absolutely. Uh, you know, sort of resembling what we thought they were getting, it's now starting to show up. Uh, better late than never is what we always say. And you could project this type of performance into a playoff series, and you might alter your thinking on where this team goes. Well, that's just it. Like that, I mean, let's face it, a big reason why Brad Tree Living uh, was uh, attracted to Tyler Bertuzzi on a one year deal at $5.5 million was playoff performance. This is a guy who had five goals in seven games for the Bruins, and the Bruins would have happily had him back. So, um, you know, the. That's what they're hoping for here. And the fact that he had one goal in the previous 23 games coming into this one, yeah, that's not what the Leafs were looking for. They're looking for a little more production than that, clearly. Uh, but look, the two goals tonight, there's been some other promising signs with Bertuzzi. We've heard Sheldon Keefe uh, publicly call him out a little bit, saying, hey, he's got to practice a little harder. He's got to take the drills a little more seriously. Uh, we've heard him, you know, staying a little later at practice than usual. And maybe that's what we're seeing here is a little bit of hard work, a, a little bit more uh, nose to the grindstone. And, and what do you know? You are suddenly in the middle of uh, a great game, and the Maple Leafs are – pulling off what uh, so far I mean a long way to go here with 20 minutes left against the best home team in the NHL but a great performance by the Leafs uh, after 40 minutes just another one of those storylines that solves itself I think if you went back even a month ago and, and you rated the Brad Tree Living signings you, you'd be trumpeting uh, people like Benoit and a few others but Bertuzzi and Domi were on the outs that way now both of them are, are viable and important factors on this team albeit on the same line yeah, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing. It's a great turnaround. And I think, look, they're, they're both veteran guys. They both have track records. So people, I think, had a, a fairly long leash with both these guys. There was a feeling that, yeah, they might not be doing it now, but they, they have it in them to do it. Uh, but still, you know, it gets late early, and we are at game 56 here. And, it, you know, the, you expect a little more than what, what has sort of gone on with both those players to date. But the most recent returns, certainly with Bertuzzi tonight and, and Domi, uh, uh, being a factor, you know, in in the past handful of games in, in a very positive way, I think the, the, those are great signs, and and certainly something the Leafs will want to build on from here, and uh, and carry into the playoffs. Dave, thanks. Three two for the Leafs over Colorado after forty minutes of play. Bertuzzi with two as nine on the season. Marner got his twenty third. Marvelous second period from the Leafs. We'll see what happens in period number three. The out of town scoreboard is next. This is Walsh Canadian Leafs hockey on TSN ten fifty, the iHeart Radio app, and the Leafs Radio Network. Breaking story from Alpine News Network. Sandra and Kabir are celebrating 50 years of marriage by turning their boring bedroom into a spicy one. Oh, my. Alpine Credits sent a super strength hero to help with a home renovation load. New floors, windows, a heart-shaped button that plays this tune. Okay, I think that's quite enough. Own your home? Need a loan? Alpine Credits can help. Alpine Credits, where homeowners get approved. Just for license 12616. From the biggest stadiums to the coziest holes in the wall. From house parties to porch hangs to pride celebrations. From your favorite fuss shop to your local Indian spot. From noodle bars to sports bars to salsa bars. There's a Molson with your name on it. Canadian Ultra XL. Molson. Everyone in. Must be legal drinking age. Unhibernate. Verb. To laugh in the face of snow because you drive a Subaru. As in, when I unhibernate, I have the roads all to myself because my Subaru has symmetrical full-time all-wheel drive and others don't. Or, the award-winning safety in my Subaru means I can unhibernate all winter while my neighbors stare longingly from their bedroom windows. Or my favorite usage, I am going to unhibernate this winter by visiting my local Subaru dealer today. Welcome to Uncommon Winter Confidence. Who says kids get to have all the fun during March break? Say no to building a snowman. And shell yeah to building sandcastles with Sunwing Vacations. We've got what you're looking for out of paradise, like water parks, crystal clear waters, white sand beaches, and more. 
Not to mention a host of breathtaking destinations, each as beautiful as the last. When you save more, you can explore more with your travel agent or... At Trillium Health Partners, we're ready to see you. Not just as a patient, but as a person. A person who needs innovative care with a human touch. A person with a life, with hopes, and with fears. At Trillium Health Partners, we'll see the whole you. Our nurses, our doctors, and our staff. Because when we care for the whole person, our whole community gets stronger. Trillium Health Partners, we see you. Learn more at weseeyou.ca. Diverse stories, captivating originals. Stars has the shows unlike anything else. We changing the game. This February, add Stars to your Crave subscription for new episodes of the Crime Saga Power Book 3 Raising Canaan. I win everything. Plus, all new episodes of the gritty drama High Town. You should be ready for what's coming. Stars also has big movies like the action packed King of Killers. Nobody leaves until the game is finished. And the Oscar winning hit Argo. I've never left anyone behind. Get Stars as an add on at Crave.ca. The Out of Town Scoreboard brought to you by Maple Toyota. Build your next dream Toyota at Maple Toyota. Check out Maple Toyota's pre-owned inventory. It's arriving daily, and it is time to Toyota. Visit mapletoyota.com. Out of Town, here's what we have. Bruins 2-1 over the Canucks. That's uh, early in the second period. It is at the end of the second period. Ottawa and Golden Knights tied at 2. End of the first. Stars 1-0 over the Canes earlier today. Detroit got by the Blues 6-1. Devils edged Montreal 4-3. Lightning 4-2 over the Islanders. And the Rangers defeated the Flyers 2-1. Final in overtime. It's uh, the Panthers winning by 3-2 over the Capitals. Getting set to start Calgary and Edmonton. Nashville and San Jose. Minnesota in Seattle and the Ducks in L.A. against the Kings. At our game, 3-2 for the Leafs over Colorado after 40 minutes of play. Oh, yes, guy. The third period is next. Can't wait for that. This is most of Canadian Leafs hockey on TSN 1050, the iHeartRadio app, and the Leafs Radio Network. Hi, this is Megan Kelly from The Megan Kelly Show on Sirius XM Triumph. On The Megan Kelly Show, you're going to hear conversations you won't find anywhere else for reals. You got people who are on the hard right, you got people on the hard left. I'm bringing you my honest opinions. Don't cower away from the tough subjects out of fear of offending someone. That's not us. I'm unleashed, unafraid, and I'm loving every minute of it. The Megan Kelly Show, weekdays at noon east on Sirius XM Triumph Channel 111. The Power Play with Steve Coolius. I'm with John Cooper, head coach of the Lightning. You've been in Tampa 12 years. Do you think you could run the table where you are? You know, we have something special here. For me personally, as, soon, as long as the fire still burns and the burn to win uh, and to make this city proud... I will do this as long until they kick me out. And as long as that's happening, if somebody takes me, uh, I'll be there to give them everything I have. The Power Play. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. The Points with Boomer Gordon. The Avs got a little Jekyll and Hyde going on this year. And when they're rolling, they look unstoppable and you think, wow, no one's going to slow down the Avs. And then when it doesn't go well, you go, they're just not deep enough. Nichushkin isn't there right now. We don't know if Landis Gog is going to come back. Yes, Colorado's good, Jake, but unless McKinnon's getting two, three points every night, they don't have the parts. Points with Boomer Gordon. 1 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. Feel the passion of Major League Soccer all season long on Sirius XM FC. Stupendously magnificent! Every week, hear all the top matches, including every Inter-Miami game. Messi up over and get analysis and insight from our team of experts like former MVP Tony Miola. He looks so confident. It's starting to look so easy. It's Major League Soccer's biggest season ever, and you can experience it on Sirius XM FC 157 and streaming on the all-new Sirius XM app. Join me, Ward Stellick, and Scott Laughlin as we recap the night that was on NHL Morning Skate, weekday mornings at 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM 91. Some milestone uh, nights. Tyler Bertuzzi celebrates his birthday with a pair of goals and now has 101 career goals. Max Domi picked up an assist and he now has 400 career points. William Nylander has uh, picked up an assist. He now has 298 assists in his career. And what about Ty Domi, Max's dad? 245 career points. 
So Max is best at that. Willie yes. Nylander is best at his father. Yeah. A lot of categories. I don't think uh, Max is going to uh, eclipse his dad's number one no. record. No. <laughs> I don't think that is so far out of reach. And you know what? If, if you go back and look at some of the YouTube videos and, and the scraps that Ty was in, I, I don't think anyone pound for pound was tougher in the history of the National Hockey League. Not even remotely close. He took on guys that were five wow. and six inches taller than him. Well, everybody was bigger. Right? Yeah, ev ev virtually, was. yep. And uh, being left-handed surprised people at times, but if you did your homework, you'd better be prepared for it. Leafs to the left and the avalanche to the right. Puck dropped. Underway here, Taves gets it out at center. Leafs with a 3-2 lead into the third as McCarr turns back in his own zone. Taves will get it ahead, and it's deflected into the Toronto end. Lilligren sending it back along for Matthews. Rink wide. Brody, a long lead pass, gets to the line and in with Nyes. Nyes going wide on the defense, couldn't get to it as Taves had him tied up. Down the boards comes Benoit to keep it in a little deeper, but the Leafs are in the midst of a change, and as are the Avalanche. Leafs return home to host. The Vegas Golden Knights on Tuesday night. Knights are in Boy, that's happened Ottawa. A lot. Happened a lot this year, haven't we, against the West playing teams. Vancouver. Seattle. Yeah. And across the line comes Ross Colton. Bouncing puck goes wide of the lead goal. Fed back to the point. Long shot high over top of the goal. Sent there by uh, Gerard. Now the puck into the far corner. Bertuzzi. Gets it elevated, and it's going to land in the neutral zone. And quickly brought on now by Nylander. And he almost, and I mean almost, pickpocketed Samuel Gerard. Avalanche get rid of it to center. And slowing up as much as he can. I think Morgan Riley may have hurt himself there. He, he actually stopped skating and reached. Reach, but he gave it the good reach. Yeah. He may have hurt himself, though. <laughs> <laughs> it was effective. It, he got what he wanted. Which yep. The icing call. Face off in the Colorado zone. We've seen Surely guys. after a piece of acting like that, you should score a goal, right? Go out of the right of Georgiev. Is scrummed, but the Leafs push it back to the blue line. Riley keeps it in and around back of the net, but out of the reach of its intended receiver, Bobby McMahon. And now the Avalanche send it in and get a change of players going. Played up on the right side for Tavares. Pushed ahead for McMahon. That didn't connect. And it's played back down into the Toronto zone. Brody chipping it along. Pushed to the line but not out. Gloved there over on the left wing side and a shot. That was stopped by Samsonov. He poked the puck into the corner on the rebound. And now it is grabbed off by Lilligren who gets it ahead. He's minus a glove. As it's played down into Colorado's own. Avalanche sent it right back into the leaf end. Benoit there. Reverses the puck for defensive partner McCabe. McCabe goes rink wide for Benoit. And Benoit comes up the boards. And as he did, it was tipped by David Camp. And ends up in the Avalanche bench. really been a good game hasn't it it has I mean, been i mean there's you know the skill has been on display both teams on the forge i'm not sure what sheldon keith is perplexed by over on the leaf bench leafs are out shooting the avalanche 26 to 20 at this point in the game or check that 26 to 22 upgraded Puck down in the Toronto zone. Holmberg is able to poke it, but not out. Walking the line with it. It comes back to the blue line. Avalanche quickly with it. Gerard got a shot away. That was blocked. Leafs with a little bit of skating room and just play it out into neutral ice. They'll try to get it a little bit deeper as Camp has it pinned up against the boards. Holmberg has uh, jumped over the wall and the Matthews line is coming over the boards. 
Arantanen dropping it back in his own zone. Got it up on the left wing for Ross Colton. Colton was drilled. And then the Leaf player goes down as a long shot is knocked away by Samsonov's left hand. Marner got tripped up there as it's cleared out into the center ice area. Yeah, it was Marner and Colton, Joe, that glided along the boards. Played back down into Toronto territory. Back of the net, nice. And as he tried to send it around, it went off a body and up into the screen. And the uh, I think it's, again, Ross Colton trying to lobby for a, a delay of game penalty. Oh, he made a terrible ref. He's already messed up one goal call and now <laughs> delay a game call. And the Leafs have been fortunate, I mean, in this game as well. And, you know, you can go back to that fortunate bounce Martin Jones had early in the game against Vegas where it looped over him, hit inches in front of the goal line, spun backwards instead of going forward into the net. Ilya Samsonov has had about three get to the goal line. Shot from the point, goes high over top of the net. Puck around the boards to the far side. Another shot towards the net, deflects wide to the near side. And Nylander just spins and rolls it out into center ice territory. Taves will regroup the puck and now starts up on the right wing side as it's shot down into the Toronto zone. Down the boards is Jonathan Drouin. He couldn't get any further. Long shot from the point went off a body and deflected harmlessly wide. Kept alive by Taves. Gets it returned. Taves in with a pass. Oh, good skate save. Oh. That was a beauty. That was Bertuzzi, was it not? He made a great skate save without a stick and hurt himself when he blocked the shot. That time, he makes a brilliant skate save. That's from uh, out near Antwerp Playground in Sudbury, Ontario. Right there, mister. That's a great, great defensive play. That was a little Bernie Bront there, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. Kick save and a beauty. You remember he blocked two shots on an empty net. It was either last year or two years ago against the Leafs. Where... Wings had pulled their goalie. Now, Nylander has had his stick broken in the face-off area. Now here are the Avalanche getting it in. Good play there made by Bertuzzi to knock it aside. Nylander's gone to get a new stick, but the puck comes in. And a pass save and a rebound. Was shot wide of the lead goal. Good pressure again from the Avalanche at the blue line. Rantanen. Shot scores! All of this starts when Willie Nylander has his stick broken in the face-off circle. And the Avalanche have tied the game at threes. And very similar to the Mitch Marner goal. A wrist shot, middle of the ice, traffic in front. But Joe, I thought the Leafs, whether it's a tired group or not, they got very passive. Everybody just kind of sitting back, nobody forcing the play. And Rantanen like Marner did in the second period, decides, I'm going to throw it on the net. And Ilya Samsonov was unable to find it through his screen. And Colorado Avalanche tie the game and shots on goal at 26 and tie it in the goal scored at 3-3. For Rantanen, it is 30th goal of the season. And the game is tied at three. Leafs in the offensive zone, though. Here's a chance in front and a pass for McMahon. Didn't reach him, and he might have had an empty net if he had. Puck kept alive by Tavares. Top of the circles took a shot. That went off the body of uh, Bowen Byram and went wide of the net in the race down the right wing side with O'Connor trying to drive. And the shot went wide, and the deflection had the Avalanche player crash into the end boards. Back come the Maple Leafs in across the line. Robertson unable to get through. McMahon into the far corner. McMahon after the puck, and it is cleared away from them and uh, Ma uh, Matthews as well. Leafs changing. McCabe stretches things out. Got it up on the right side for Marner. He misses a hit. Got it into the slot area. Bouncing puck, though. Knocked away, and the Avalanche get it out at center, but Matthews steals. Tried to hook up there with Marner, but the pass went off a stick and back into the Leaf end. Goal has got the crowd revved up at the Pepsi Center. Played ahead at center. Did I say Pepsi? It used to be. It's the ball arena, right? It used to be the Pepsi Center. Yeah. When did that change? We haven't been out there so long. I forget. Maybe it was. Well, technically, the Pepsi logo is a ball. Thanks for helping out. 
Shot down into the <laughs> avalanche zone. Played around the boards and up on the right wing side, and it's back down into Toronto territory. Icing waved off, though. Good hustle by McKinnon. The puck is back at the net. McKinnon centered. That went off a skate. It comes back to Devin Taves. Taves on the left wing side trying to drive. Can't get to it. McKinnon had it knocked away. Puck is around back of the net. Lilligren chases his man. Comes back to the point. Now to McCarr. Nifty move. Closing in. Shot blocked. And the Leafs are trying to counter here. Breaking out his camp with Pontus Holmberg. Holmberg will lay it into the zone and get a change of players as we played seven minutes of the third period. And the game is now tied at threes. Fans from Colorado loving what they're seeing. Avalanche tie the game and they've been dangerous since. Bouncing puck at the red line. Controlled by McMahon who drops it back. Leafs get it up on the wing now for Tavares. Tavares with a pass off a stick and into the zone. In goes Pontus Holmberg after the loose puck. Or at least Nick Robertson after the loose puck. Can't get to it. And it's backhanded high and out into the center ice area. And then a whistle stops play. Ice stick, maybe. Robertson touching the puck. Well, we can't see for sure, but we'll assume that it is a high stick that has made contact with it. And so it'll be a face-off, I believe, in the center ice area. As the Leafs and the Avalanche are tied at threes. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. Opening day is only weeks away. And Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you draft a winning fantasy baseball team. It's a home run for Ronald Acuna. Hey, what's up? It's Steve Phillips. Hang out with me on the Fantasy Dugout as I give you draft advice, player projections, and the tools you need to take home a fantasy baseball championship. The Fantasy Dugout, weekdays at 2 Eastern on Channel 87. Every team that wins a championship this year because somebody took a chance. Or just search Fantasy Dugout anytime on the new Sirius XM app. The Power Play with Steve Coolius. I'm with John Cooper, head coach of the Lightning. You've been in Tampa 12 years. Do you think you could run the table where you are? You know, we have something special here. For me personally, as soon as long as the fire still burns and the burn to win uh, and to make this city proud, I will do this as long until they kick me out. And as long as that's happening, if somebody takes me, uh, I'll be there to give them everything I have. The Power Play. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. The points with Boomer Gordon. The Avs got a little Jekyll and Hyde going on this year. And when they're rolling, they look unstoppable, and you think, wow, no one's going to slow down the Avs. And then when it doesn't go well, you go, they're just not deep enough. Nichushkin isn't there right now. We don't know if Landis Gog is going to come back. Yes, Colorado's good, Jake, but unless McKinnon's getting two, three points every night, they don't have the parts. Points with Boomer Gordon. 1 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. Join me, Scott Lachlan, and Gord Stellick, along with former NHLer Mike Johnson for NHL Morning Skate. Weekday morning, 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM 91. Maple Leafs 3, Avalanche 3. Third period. After a goal from Mikko Rantanen, McKinnon and Byram drawing the assist. Have to check to see what Kucherov did today. Three assists for Nathan McKinnon. They put him in the NHL, NHL scoring lead. Filled Kucherov by two coming in. Played through center ice. Knifed into the Toronto zone. Chipped out at center. Marner starts away. Glances over his shoulder to see how much room he has. Pulls up at the half boards on the near wing. Got it back to the blue line, but... Riley couldn't get there in time to keep it in. Now it is Lilligren rifling it down the boards to send it around the wall. Puck almost stolen by Brody. But now Taves has it stretched out and gets it ahead. Brought on by Rantanen. Rantanen splits the defense and he was able to get a shot away. But threw it wide of the net. Fans hollering for a penalty there. Puck along the boards kept in then by Cogliano. Back of the net, Brody with Nyes. Nyes sends it back for Lilligren. And Lilligren trying to stretch things out as Ranton into the bench after a great rush. With a Kucherov, two assists. 
today. So still a point up on Nathan McKinnon. Played out into the center ice area. Unable to get in cleanly there was uh, the Avalanche winger. And it shot down the ice. Manson goes back for it. He starts up ice for Colorado. Left wing feed now for Gerard. Gerard's shot was deflected wide of the net harmlessly. Puck along the boards. Trying to tip it free. It does come free to Tavares. Tavares' pass is just going to get out at center ice. Turning with it now is Gerard. Up on the left wing. Colton. Drop pass. Shot. Blockered away nicely by Samsonov. Rebound comes back to the blue line. Pushed to the line and out. But it goes into the Toronto bench, I believe. At least that's what I think the whistle is for. 10-18 okay. to go here in the third period. I think Robertson's reaction might suggest that he thought they should have played on as he was about ready to take off up the left wing side. Fourth anyway, consecutive 30-goal season for Miko Rantanen. Only I Quebec believe. Nordique have done it before in the franchise's history. You know, since Nathan McKinnon came into the league, he is third in scoring, only behind Sidney Crosby. Oh, and Connor McDavid, who arrived a little later, but has put up the pretty good numbers. Shot down into Avalanche territory. McMahon hustled after it, but couldn't come up with it. Now an icing opportunity here, and Simone Benoit shows you some pretty good foot speed, outracing Logan O'Connor to get to the icing. Yeah, Leafs have dodged a couple of bullets tonight. Both Simon Benoit and Tyler Bertuzzi were injured blocking shots, but both have been able to stay in the game, although Benoit did go to the Leaf dressing room briefly. Bertuzzi did as well, but came back out. Oh, did you say that? Yes. Yeah. I find it's easier if I don't pay attention to what you say and just kind of come up with my own ideas. You know, you don't pay attention to what I say. <laughs> <laughs> Picking up on that, are you? <laughs> what's that? What's laid, that? <laughs> <laughs> laid down into the lead zone. <laughs> Whoa! A collision there with Morgan Riley and goaltender Samsonov almost led to disaster. <laughs> lead pass to flex down into Avalanche territory. Under 10 minutes to play in the third. We're deadlocked at threes. Kept alive by Tavares. He'll play it in deep into the corner. Cut off by Taves. And now the Avalanche swing it out onto the left wing side. And here's McKinnon again. Coming through neutral ice. Had it bogged down and pushed back out at center ice by the Leaf defense. Taves will regroup back in his own zone with McCarr. McCarr rink wide to the left wing side for Ranton and Stolen there by the Leafs. Unable to penetrate though is Domi. Back come the Avalanche. Lekkonen in across the line, dropping for McKinnon, back to Lekkonen, back to the point, shot coming in traffic, that was blocked, chipped at, but not cleared by the Maple Leafs, played into the near corner, hustling after it there was Lilligren, got it freed up for Brody, Brody against the boards, runs into the board checking of Zach Parise, but the puck comes free, and now circling back with it is Nylander, who's going to get it elevated to center on a backhand, only to have it played right back into the Toronto zone. Riley scampers back. This time the communication with his goaltender is much better. He may have an in-person review with player safety. <laughs> After running, <laughs> running his own goaltender. Well, not allowed, you know. Yeah. I'll hear the <laughs> Leafs getting it around back of the net. Pontus Holmberg with it again in the corner. Holmberg gets it back to the point. One timer coming, but it went off a leg harmlessly wide. Leafs have the rebound. Camp into the slot and another drive. That's why the rebound shovel to the front of the net on a good effort behind the goal. Played right around the boards. It's going to come to the point. Backhanded into the corner once more. Camp back of the net for Pontus Holmberg. Holmberg to Camp. Reeves has gone to the front of the net. Back to the point. One timer coming. That's wide. And the rebound cleared into the corner. Now it's the Leafs taking the turn as Reeves gets a good hit on Zach Parise. Leafs to the bench. Matthews over the boards. Avalanche with it back of their own goal. That might be the Leafs' best shift of the third period. And it's from the fourth line. Josh Manson waiting for his teammates to set up. 
Now gives the puck to Devin Taves. And Matthew, our Manson, has gone to the bench. And all of this <laughs> slowdown is in behind the Avalanche goal. Now they break it out. Pass up through the middle is deflected into the Toronto end. Benoit reverses the puck, but onto an avalanche stick instead. Now he steps into his man to make sure that that isn't going to go any further. It comes back to the point with a long shot. And out at the top of the crease and spotting that was Ilya Samsonov, who is going to hold for a faceoff coming in the Toronto zone. Hey, you love the grit and the physicality of Benoit and McCabe, but sometimes you've got to live with those turnovers in your own end. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. Things are heating up with Sunwing Vacations. Great all-inclusive packages to paradise like the Dominican Republic. Home to some of the world's best beaches like Bavaro Beach. And once in a vacay eco-adventures to try. Ever climb a waterfall? Take your pick of all-inclusive hotels to fit your style better than a new swimsuit. You can change the season in the Dominican Republic because when you save more, you explore more with your travel agent or... Alpine News Network is here live with one of our superheroes. I just helped Tom with a business loan. He needed to soup up his mechanic shop. Not to brag, but I once modified a car to match my ultra speed. It went so fast, it broke the speed of sound. At least no one was inside. I hope no one was inside. I guess I'll just stick to approving business loans. Own your home? Need a loan? Alpine Credits can help. Alpine Credits, where homeowners get approved. Just for license 12616. From the biggest stadiums to the coziest holes in the wall. From house parties to porch hangs to pride celebrations. From your favorite fuss shop to your local Indian spot. From noodle bars to sports bars to salsa bars. There's a Molson with your name on it. Canadian Ultra XL. Molson. Everyone in. Must be legal drinking age. So the Maple Leafs and the Avalanche are tied 3-3. And the Leafs looking for one here in the third period. Came into the period with a 3-2 lead before Miko Ranton and sifted one from the high slot through a screen past Elias Samsonov. It is amazing how both goals, Marner and Ranton, were almost identical. A little more traffic in front of Samsonov, but Matthew Nyes provided the screen on the Marner goal. Face-off controlled by Toronto. Launched high to center ice, but settled nicely there by Taves. Sent back in over the line. Lilligren. Rink-wide pass. Gobbled up. Brought back in over the line. Dropped off onto the wing and uh, unable to play it was McKinnon. Now to the right wing side. Back to McCarr. Shot in traffic. Knocked away there by Samsonov. McKinnon with it again. And Rantanen trying to work the boards this time, and it is cleared to center ice. McCarr off a wing to the far side, gobbled up by Brody, played high to center ice. Marner almost stole it, dove to try and knock it away, and then couldn't quite come up with it. Back come the Avalanche in on the right side with a shot, and an arm save made by Samsonov. Right back the other way comes Bobby McMahon. Here comes Rocket to the net. And that was deflected wide by Georgiev. Back to the point. Benoit's shot was partially blocked. Cleared to center ice. Forcing Benoit back into his own zone. Benoit chopping it along the boards and around the wall to the near wing. Wow, little interference done there by Miles Wood on Jake McCabe. But McCabe gets it up the middle and Robertson is away. Ahead to Tavares. Tavares fanned on shooting it in, and when he did, everything had bogged down, so they're heading to the bench. 5.23 left in regulation. Leafs three, Colorado three. It's been a whale of a hockey game. Pass up ahead for Jack Johnson. He'll shoot it down deep into the zone. If the referee could get out of the way there, we could see what was going on. It's played around the boards and back of the net. Parise trying to come out with it. Back to the point. One-timer deflects. Grabbed off then by Bertuzzi. Bertuzzi flips the puck to center ice. Johnson shooting it back into the leaf end. Lagason goes back. Gets it to his defense partner who quickly clears to center. 
That got by Nylander, and it's going to slide down in on goal. Nylander into the four check. Bertuzzi tries to join, and as he does, the puck goes off a stick and up into the screen. And out of play with faceoff coming in the avalanche zone. It is a 3-3 tie. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. Play this record. I am Teddy Rowley. And almost 40 years ago, I redefined the culture, introducing the world to New Jack Swing. What we're going to do now is go back. Now you know. Series XM honors the music that shaped a generation. Teddy Rowley's New Jack Swing Radio. Now throughout Black History Month, for a limited time on Channel 79 and the all-new Sirius XM app. The Power Play with Steve Coolius. With Tyler Toffoli of the New Jersey Devils. Lindy Ruff, is he still the prankster in the room? Is- Just a quick little funny story. We had a little layoff football pool, and me and Nate Bastion won. Lindy obviously came up to me right away and asked where I was taking him out for dinner. He's been great at it, just with, with the whole season and being there, uh, talking to all the boys when things aren't going well and just trying to encourage us to play the up to our potential. It's been good. He's, he's awesome. The Power Play. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. Feel the passion of Major League Soccer all season long on Sirius XM FC. Stupendously magnificent! Every week, hear all the top matches, including every Inter-Miami game. Messi up over Andy! And get analysis and insight from our team of experts, like former MVP Tony Miola. He looks so confident. It's starting to look so easy. It's Major League Soccer's biggest season ever, and you can experience it on Sirius XM FC 157 and streaming on the all-new Sirius XM app. Join me, Ward Stellick, and Scott Lachlan as we recap the night that was on NHL Morning Skate, weekday mornings at 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM 91. Joe Bowen along with Jim Ralph as we head down the back stretch in this one. Maple Leafs 3 and the Colorado Avalanche 3. Colorado, this is the 22nd time they've trailed into the third period. They're 8 and 13. The previous 21. That, that's a pretty good recovery record. Draw one by Toronto. Lilligren can't shoot it at the net. Sends it down into the corner. Cut off by McCarr. McCarr engaged by Marner and Matthews. Matthews a centering pass. Didn't reach. It comes back in along the boards. Chopped in along the wall for Tavares. In front for Matthews. Got a one-timer away but didn't get it to the net. Has it again. Down into the corner. Marner back to the blue line. Leafs pressing here with a chance with McCabe holding. McCabe drops for Marner. Just kept in. Sends it to the front of the net. That was deflected wide with Matthews in front. And to alleviate. Oh, now is this? All right, they're going to say, I think, that it was off a stick and out. I was wondering if it was perhaps. Oh, it is a penalty. Nico Ranton is going to the box well, for the delay again. Well, there you just can't do that. So the Leafs took a delay of game penalty in the first period, and the Avalanche scored. Now in the third, they are taking a delay of game penalty. Now part of it is, when you're in that position that Ranton is in, right on the left wing boards, he looks up to play it up the boards. The linesman's right there, standing on the blue line. So I'm sure that's got to play into your head, doesn't it? That you don't want to rattle it off the linesman and have it kept in. But I thought the initial call for the referee was that it hit something on the way out. Not the case. Power play brought to you by your Ontario Subaru dealers. Get more value out of every kilometer in a Subaru, starting with award-winning safety at your local Subaru dealer. Leafs win the draw. Working to the right wing side, Marner. Works into the corner. Sends it back into the slot. Matthews doesn't shoot it. Well, he does. And it was deflected wide of the net. Matthews on the near half board. Back to the blue line. Settled nicely by Riley. Far side for Nylander. Nylander into the corner and behind the net for Marner. Chipped along for Matthews. Matthews back to the point to Riley. Riley walks the line. Middle of the ice. Matthews up high. Holding. Down to the right wing side. Settled by Marner. Marner looks in front. Still with it. Back to Matthews. To Riley. Riley to Willie. Nylander holds in the far circle. Back to Riley. Lots of passing but on the outskirts. It is Bertuzzi in front of the goal. Marner got it to him but a weak shot was stopped. Matthews with the loose puck. Very aggressive Penalty killing here by the Avalanche. Matthews down low for Willie. Nylander far half boards. Works back. 
Top of the circle now. Working in, down low, centering pass, and unable to jam it home was Riley as he was down low. Marner is able to keep the puck in. Good power play here. Shot from the blue line to flex wide. Nylander around back of the center in front. They score! Tyler Bertuzzi! Holy Makata! The birthday boy has got three! And the Maple Leafs have the lead! 2.51 to go. And Bertuzzi's third. And you know what, Joe? You give Sheldon Kreef some credit here. You don't take anything away from John Tavares, but Bertuzzi, three on the night, his second on the power play. And again, all three goals have got to be within four feet of the net. As Mitch Marner makes his spectacular play, looks like he's going behind the net. He's got Georgiev looking over his left shoulder, moving to his left, it comes out the short side, and Bertuzzi just snaps it home. And the Leafs have regained the one-goal lead here late in the third period. But if you're a Leaf fan, buckle up, because the big boys will be coming for Colorado. So Tyler Bertuzzi, who ends a drought, scores his 100th career goal, taps off the birthday celebration with a hat trick, and the Maple Leafs have a 4-3 lead on the power play goal. And talk about a power play. They are 8 of 17 coming in. Make it now 10 of 19. 2.51 to play. And you're right, Jimmy. Buckle up. The Leafs need to have a solid couple of minutes here. Played down into the offensive zone. Back on the boards. Pontus Holmberg trying to pin it up against the wall. Was knocked down on the play. Brought back now by the Avalanche to center. Carried ahead by Byram. He is a force back into his own territory. Did Marner get an assist on that? I think it was Nylander and Matthews. You're right. That might have been Nylander, the right-handed shot. Made, made the pass, yeah. yeah. Here's the Leafs in again. A chance for Tavares. And it was tipped away from him. Holmberg trying to keep it in. It's going to come back out at center. And Morgan Riley steps up to the red line. He'll bring it in over the line, into the slot, still with it. Got to get a shot away, didn't work. Matthews was able to play it around the boards. It'll come to the near point. Another shot. That deflected off Georgiev and went over top of the goal. Minute 54 to go. Avalanche back the other way. Rantanen taken to the boards effectively there by Matt or by Riley. Leafs get it to the line, but not out. Could be six attackers on now, and it is. Here's a chance down into the corner now for the Avs. Back to the blue line to McCarr. McCarr to McKinnon. McKinnon holds, passes in, shot blocked, rebound cleared. Where's the puck? No, it's kept in by McCarr. McCarr to the far point. Into the corner it comes. Looking for McCarr again. High into the near side for McKinnon. McKinnon turns. Got a shot away. Good block made by Benoit. Back to McCarr once more. Tired group. Another shot. Blocked. And Boy, a Morgan, whistle here. Morgan Riley is down. I think he's okay. He's shaking his head that way. I'll tell you what. There should have been a penalty on the Avalanche in the high slot. Morgan Riley, or uh, Mitch Marner got taken down. Yes. Boy, and right before that, Matthew Nyes on a redirection off the crossbar. I thought Georgiev got a piece of it. Boy, this was a high shot. And it hits Riley in the helmet, I believe, or the side of the head. And you he know what puts he his did? hand up there. Yeah. And so smart to do that. Riley put his glove up by his ear, then turned his body. And that's the area that it hit him in. So, I mean, that that's a veteran move, isn't it? Because sure is. So, the Leafs have blocked 24 shots. And no bigger than the one Morgan Riley just took there with a minute 11 to go in the third period. The Leafs hanging on here to a one-goal lead. The draw scrummed. Puck comes free. Leafs get it to the line, but not out. McCarr was able to battle Marner for it. Kept alive on the far side. Played up against the boards and pinned over there. Camp along with Brody and it's still free. And now finally it's poked back to the blue line. Walking the line, McCarr. One-timer from the other side went wide. Rebound to McKinnon. 
Down into the corner. Cut off by the Maple Leafs, but not maintained. Puck comes back along the near boards. Broken up in the Leafs car. Going to get it out to center ice. And I mean just out. 28 seconds. Shot back in again. Fresh legs coming over the boards for the Maple Leafs. McCabe taken to the wall. The scrum goes on in the corner. Centering effort by Nylander doesn't clear. Puck into the corner again. Nylander with a second chance. Got it ahead. Here's Tavares. Empty net. Bury it, Johnny. He doesn't. And it's brought back with six seconds left. Four, three, two. McKinnon wide. Shooting. Stop by Samson. Game over. Game over. Boy, John Tavares was a great chance in the empty net and for some reason didn't like his angle and kept trying to change it before he lost control of it. And that left Nathan McKinnon with one final dash. And you could see John Tavares showing, and I think part of it as much as anything, was thinking the longer I keep it down here, the more we can run the clock out. But that still allowed Nathan McKinnon one last gasp at the other end, and Ilya Samsonov made the final save of the game. But for Colorado, just their sixth loss on home ice in 28 games. So the Leafs' full marks coming back from a 2 nothing deficit, and Tyler Bertuzzi leading the way, and you look all through this road trip, and it's really been a different hero every night, hasn't it? Has it ever? Has it ever been? And... The lesser lights, right? I mean, uh, uh, on uh, the road trip, Matthews had his moments, Marner had his moments, but then but, you think about all of the others. Well, you had a lot of offers. Uh, I mean, David Camp had gone 25 games without a goal. Max Domi uh, Max gets a Domi, pair. Max Domi, Tyler Bertuzzi. So, guys, uh, Pontus Holmberg, I think, had gone, uh, what was he? Uh, Camp was 25 games. Hol- Holmberg was 24 games when he scored. So, I mean, you had a lot of guys that were either struggling and let's face it, we've talked about this a lot. The ice time hasn't been there either. And whether you say they've earned the trust of Sheldon Keefe to get more minutes or they're more productive because they've gotten more minutes, um, that's a debate you can uh, take to the end of the season. Um, but certainly from a Leaf standpoint, uh, they have really come together as a team. And as uncomfortable as this finish was, uh, it was a fun game to watch, fun game to broadcast, and what a road trip for the Leafs. It certainly is. They will return home to entertain the Vegas Golden Knights on Tuesday night, a 7 o'clock start. We hope that you will join Jim and I for that contest from uh, Scotiabank Arena. A hat trick for Tyler Bertuzzi sends the Maple Leafs to a 4-3 victory over the Avalanche in Colorado. Who'd have thunk it? Well, what about this, though? We mentioned this stat coming in. On the road against the Western Conference this year now, the Leafs are 12-2-2. And And that is the final game against the West on the road. Overall, overall they're 22-5-2 against the Western Conference. Wouldn't it be nice to just start against the West? Get into the playoffs? Well, you're the commissioner. (laughs) Couldn't you just uh, make a little move? I'm still a little upset over the Riley uh, suspension Okay, that I suspended him for us. <laughs> so, All right. I'm not going to let him move. No, I don't think so. We'll ship it off. Jim Taddy, Dave Festchuk, plenty to talk about. Leafs win 4-3. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. The NFL's top draft prospects are ready to show what they've got at the 2024 NFL Scouting Combine. Deep down the middle of field, Marvin Harrison's going to take it to the house. Tune in for exclusive interviews with GMs, head coaches, and the top prospects as they prepare for the NFL Draft. You put the tape on, they're good football players, so sometimes it helps. You kind of know what you're getting. Coverage kicks off Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern on Sirius XM NFL Radio Channel 88 in the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. The NHL trade deadline is coming. Friday, March 8th. Tune in for all-day coverage. Beginning at 7 a.m. with NHL Morning Skates. At 11 a.m., it's Mick Kern and your calls. At 1 p.m., Boomer Gordon brings you the trades as they happen. Then... 
When the bell rings at 3 p.m. Eastern. Steve Cooley's and the power play break it all down. The best analysis, insight, and breaking news. Follow at Sirius XM NHL on X. And tune in to Trade Deadline Day. NHL Network Radio. NHL Network Radio. On demand. On demand with the all-new Sirius XM app. From in the crease to in the locker room. Mr. Rick Tockett, if you're taking a mix of coaches you had that the best of, what is that mix for Rick Tockett? Scotty Bowman behind the bench, tactician. Mike Keenan, a lot of stuff that coaches do now, he did. Jim Schaaf, the father figure. And Mike Sullivan. You know, I still talk to guys like Craig Burby, Travis Green. So, I, you know, there's a mixture, and then you got to find your own niche, right? Sirius XM, NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91. And on your schedule with the Sirius XM app. Hey, Toronto. I'm David Morris, City, host of the Daily Toronto Me Please podcast, Locked On Lease, part of the Locked On Podcast Network on the Sirius XM app. Every weekday, we bring you the latest Leafs news and analysis, break down all the action, including this game you're listening to right now, and preview the next one. We're giving you everything a Leafs fan could want, all in a daily 30-minute podcast. Download Locked On Leafs right now on the SiriusXM app, available with all trials and popular plans, or where you get your podcast. Search Locked On. Feel the passion of Major League Soccer all season long on SiriusXM FC. Stupendously magnificent! Every week, hear all the top matches, including every Inter-Miami game. Messi up over and get analysis and insight from our team of experts like former MVP Tony Miola. He looks so confident. It's starting to look so easy. It's Major League Soccer's biggest season ever, and you can experience it on Sirius XM FC 157 and streaming on the all-new Sirius XM app. The biggest names in the game. Trying to get behind, wrist the line, and walks in, put it between his legs, shoots it, score! And each other play by play on Sirius XM. Join me, Gord Stellick, and Scott Laughlin as we recap the night that was on NHL Morning Skate, weekday mornings at 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM 91. The best hockey lives here. Burns gets it back, stick handles to the backhand, moves in front, score! NHL Play by Play on Sirius XM. Hockey lives here. Suzuki sweeps it, there's a chance, rebound, Caulfield shoots and scores! NHL Play by Play on Sirius XM. Is Leafs game night on TSN 1050 and the Leafs radio network. The Leafs live here. Puck into the corner again. Nylander with a second chance. Got it ahead. Here's Tavares. Empty net. Bury it, Johnny. He doesn't. And it's brought back with six seconds left. Four, three, two. McKinnon wide. Shooting. Stop by Samsonov. Game over. It was that kind of night. 4-3, the least win in Colorado. 7-0 and is their winning streak now. And, of course, uh, everything on the road trip. So plenty to talk about here in a positive fashion. Welcome to Leafs Game Night, the post-game show. Jim Taddy, Dave Festchuk from the Toronto Star, and Jimmy Ralph, kind enough to hang around. Uh, Ralphie, I mean, there's just there's so many storylines here. But what I like is they were down 2 nothing. They fought their way back. Uh, the game's tied. At, I mean, they don't have any shots on goal. Puck over the glass, score. And I mean, this was a marvelous win, wasn't it? Yeah, and you know what? That, that was a great game to watch yeah i mean back and forth it, it did feel like the Leafs were hanging on a little bit the third period um you know before they they were fortunate to get the the power play goal but it's uh, it's amazing how uh so much of the game kind of mirrored each other you know marner's goal was very similar to rantanen's or a wrist yep. shot through a screen you got the delay of game penalties uh both goaltenders were good at times and very fortunate at times Cool. Uh, but it, but it was a game. Whether it was you know two nothing Colorado or the Leafs taking the lead into the third period, uh, you just never felt like this one's done. <laughs> like you felt, you know, you better uh, you better to stay to the uh, the closing credits to find out what the final is. Yeah, it felt like, guys, it did feel like uh, a heavyweight battle. It felt, you know, very kind of playoff like in its intensity, uh, and it was historic too, fellas. I mean. Let's let's put this in perspective. The last time the Maple Leafs won seven straight games, the Domi playing for them was not Max. It was Ty who scored a goal in their seven straight win back in 2003. The defenseman named McCabe wasn't Jake. It was <laughs> Brian. I mean, this was a long time ago. The big setter named Maddie wasn't Austin Matthews. It was Matt Sundin. So they haven't, hey, they haven't like got... That. Yeah. They haven't got over this hill in a long time, fellas. Seven in a row, you got to celebrate it. Yeah, now, was that the year, David, they had uh, the 15 or 16-game point streak? I believe uh, it was, yeah. yeah. I think that was, uh, exactly. that was mixed in there. and the um, Yeah, it, it's certainly impressive. And, and you know what? 
Um, and I, Joe and I talked about this uh, before going on the air tonight, that, that really, um, you know, when you, you go back and you look at uh, certain moments in a season that you might define as a turning point, you, we all remember Paul Maurice screaming at his team in the, uh, yeah. during a timeout in Toronto. Um, you know, St. Louis used that song, Gloria, uh, to, you know, to rally around uh, yeah. that moment, and it became a thing. Uh, a really thing, and, and we're only talking now seven games since, but Morgan Riley gets suspended two weeks ago, and you know he was going to get something, but but it comes down as five games. And now you looked at the schedule and you said, well, you got St. Louis, you got Philly, you got Dallas, you've got better teams now, um, you know, that Ottawa in the standings, and then you've got this road trip coming up, and you're thinking this really could be uh, a team that is out of a playoff spot when they come back from Colorado. You know, if, if they don't find a way to get it together, let alone win every one of them. Um, but to me, the turning point was the St. Louis game, the first game after Ottawa. Not only do they lose Riley, they also um, are without Mitch Marner and John Tavares because of an illness. And you thought, okay, here's here's your excuse to lose now. You know, you can say, you know, nothing's going right for us. Riley's suspended. Now we got guys sick. And instead, they've used that as a, as a turning point. And, and maybe... A little bit of that old, uh, you know, the league hates us, everybody hates us, Ottawa's mocking us, and uh, you you can use that as a rallying point, which the Leafs seem to have done because, um, you know, everybody has been on board, um, you know, ever since um, losing uh, in Ottawa and losing Morgan Riley. Uh, well, whatever it takes. Um, I'm always surprised that you could say something that's never happened in Maple Leaf history. So apparently no Maple Leaf player on their birthday has ever scored a hat-trick until tonight. So Tyler Bertuzzi, I mean, he's just absolutely what everybody thought he would be. It t- took him a while to get there, but he's here now, isn't he? Yeah, and Norm Allman had three, but one was called back. Uh, Jim, <laughs> on his, it was an empty net or was offside. After. No. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great if you just sound like you know stuff? Yeah, exactly. Well, we've yeah, all been doing it, it was, for years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> but it was, um, yeah, I, I mean, it was great to see, you know, Bertuzzi come through. And, and you know, it's, it's kind of funny when you sat down and you make the list of what you need. Uh, you know, everybody wants the, the bottom six guy that can score. Uh, you want that defenseman that can be a, a shutdown guy, maybe a, a five six guy that can be physical, and and lo and behold, what you've got is all of a sudden Bobby McMahon might become the forward that you thought you were looking for. Simon Benoit through all the injuries might become the five six guy uh, that you thought you had to get maybe a couple of months ago, and um, you know now you're seeing um, what we expected from Max Domi and Tyler Bertuzzi when they were brought in in the off season. Um, so it is amazing how sometimes through circumstances, um, you don't have to look very far for what you need is, you know, if, uh, the guys you've got in that dressing room, um, you know, kind of work together and, and contribute equally. Yeah, Ralphie, you know, uh, Jim and I on the pregame show, we're talking about do we need to give some more credit to Sheldon Keefe for the way he's deployed this lineup? And look, this is the four game road trip. Uh, that started with Keefe saying, hang on here, John Tavares, you're a third liner now. You're a third line center. We're going to form a new second line with Max Domi as the centerman with Bertuzzi and Nylander on the wing. And right now, man, it's it's looking like it's a golden a golden touch by the coach because now that second line in these four games on this road trip has a combined eight goals, three from Nylander, two from Domi, three from Bertuzzi. Obviously, Matthews' line's got six goals. Matthews doesn't score tonight, which is a, a rarity of late. And the, and the JT line uh, has four goals on the road trip. So they've been able to spread out the scoring now, albeit in a four-game sample, but an awfully promising sample. Yeah, and, and like you know, like we were saying earlier, you know, uh, Bertuzzi and Domi playing the way that we thought they would up until this point. Right. And, and then, you know, Bobby McMahon kind of surprises you. And uh, with his opportunity, but it's um, you're right with Sheldon Keefe, and and I think especially, and I'm sure it was a difficult conversation to have with John Tavares, saying, "Look, this is what we're going to do in the power play. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna mix it up a little bit because you know Tavares's whole career has been you know lights out with the extra man, and but how do you argue what Tyler Berdusi's done? You know the two power play goals tonight and. Um, gives him a little bit of a different look. Um, you know, it, it doesn't have the hands of Tavares as far as the redirections go, but but really loves to get at the top of the crease. 
And, um, you know, I, I think that allows everybody else to perform their magic around them. Well, and I think the thing that surprised me was if you go to those the line changes that Dave was talking about that he stuck with uh, through the the other games you could see tonight. I thought he might have to switch them around for defensive purposes, but but he did not. So that's noteworthy. The, what I want to talk to you about, Ralphie, is Samsonov, who uh, you know I, I said to Dave in one of the intermissions. Usually the goalie taps the post or the crossbar. He had to tap the goal line. I don't think I've ever seen a goalie with with that many close plays in the goal line before. No, and then and then you go back to the Vegas game. Remember early on against Martin. Jones were looped over his shoulder, hit yeah. in front of the goal line, and but spun backwards like a Tiger Woods uh, sandwich, yeah. you know, with a little bite on it. And but it is amazing. I mean, you know, this is we're t- still talking about hockey in February, uh, but it is amazing. You know, you watched the Florida Panthers run last year; they were getting those, you know, throughout the playoffs. And you know, as I remember uh, reading Dick Irvin's uh, book, and he said his father used to re- refer to that as the the hand of God. That is just going to come out and uh, and play a factor um, for a team, but yeah, they they were blessed there. I mean, you really did feel. I mean, Georgi have had a, a couple of posts as well. I know Nye's on a redirection late, um, but you had a feeling both goaltenders um, were sort of on the verge that it could have been an eight seven game, yeah. you know. And not that they looked terrible. It's just that uh, you know, with so much skill creating plays in front of them, uh, that you thought, boy, this this really does have. Uh, the feel of, uh, you know, maybe that Minnesota-Vancouver game where yeah, it could end up 10-7, but if not for some goal posts and uh, a goal line that fortunately was three inches further back than uh, Colorado wanted it, the Leafs were able to get out with a win. Yeah, it was a strange game. It was a great game on so many different levels. But how about, you know, the, the number of broken sticks the Maple Leafs weathered in their own zone? Actually, they didn't really weather because the tying goal, the 3-3 goal from Ranton, it comes after Nylander breaks his stick and, uh, you know, allows Colorado to have some extended zone time partially as a result that ends up with uh, Ranton and scoring. But, the, you know, Bertuzzi broke a stick and had to, you know, take a block shot without a stick at one point. Robertson broke a stick and had the Leafs hemmed in. I don't know, Ralphie. It's uh, those composites aren't exactly durable, and sometimes you, maybe they should go to a slightly heavier one when they're playing in the <laughs> defensive zone. I don't know. Well, they uh, well at least they're affordable. <laughs> exactly. Only <laughs> only three hundred and fifty <laughs> these days. I hear. Yeah, it's, I, t- I tell you what's amazing. You know, you, you go through a season. Part of it is the the Leafs' record at home. Fortunately, they won the three um, at home before uh, taking off on the road trip, or I guess four in a row at home. But the uh, when you look at them against the Western Conference now, um, the Leafs twenty two five and two against the West, including twelve two and two on the road. The only losses in regulation came in that trip um, where they lost in Edmonton and in Vancouver, uh, and, that, and that to me is a bizarre stat. You know, I know they've they've caught some teams at a good time, um, but but it's just kind of wild that you see they're they're continuing it through Colorado through Vegas. Um, when you go back to earlier in the year where they couldn't beat Chicago in, in two games. Well, I mean, that means if they get into the Stanley Cup final. Oh, it's a lock? That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lock, yeah. We can wrap that one up. Yeah. <laughs> but the, uh, unless it's Edmonton, because they lost to Edmonton or yeah. Vancouver. <laughs> but it's, um, yeah, it was a fun game. And um, the, the one good thing that uh, that I think you like is that at the end of this road trip, the Leafs face adversity, right? You go down 2 nothing early, and nothing changes. They just keep playing the same way they had previously on the road trip and and find a way to come back. And, um, you know, watching watching the replay of uh, Bertuzzi's winning goal, uh, I don't think if, if Austin Matthews scores 70 this year, I don't think his celebration would be um, greater than it was. Uh, it, you could just see that he was so happy for Bertuzzi to... Uh, find the back of the net and get his third, and, and it was an important one. Ralphie, thanks for hanging around. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, boys. Yep. We're looking for the text. <laughs> 4-3. The Leafs went over Colorado. I mean, that was a fun game. And, you know, the seven-game winning streak, uh, you know, to uh, have this is the seventh win. I think it. not that the, you needed to add anything to the other six wins, but this is, uh, if you want to say icing on the cake, this is nice icing. Well, this is a marquee win. Again, this was yeah. the best home team in the National Hockey League in the Colorado Avalanche, and they came out like they came out flying. I mean, early in this game, you could have been very convinced that Sheldon Keefe was right 
in January when he said that when McKinnon's on the ice with the likes of McCarr, this is not the NHL. It's another league entirely. And, uh, you know, the, they're go up, they go up 2 nothing on two goals set up directly by Mr. McKinnon. And you're thinking, wow, maybe it is another league. Maybe, you know, maybe this is not going to be Toronto's night. Maybe the, the streak stops here. But, you know, all night. The Maple Leafs, you know, I think we said it earlier, they bent, but they did not break. You know, they definitely benefited from some tremendous goaltending from Samsonov, pulling some pucks off the goal line, as you pointed out, Jim. They definitely betted, you know, benefited from uh, some some great play from Samsonov. But look, they hung in there, and that's what you got to do yeah. against a great team. They kept punching back. They they did not give up. Uh, and Tyler Bertuzzi's, you know, a great guy to be the man of the match because he's been doing the same thing. Like, he's taken a lot of abuse. There's been people saying, what's this guy doing? We're making $5.5 million when he's got one goal in the previous 23 games. Uh, money could have been spent better elsewhere. But... You know, we've heard Sheldon Keefe say we believe he's going to be an important player for us, especially in the playoffs, because this is a guy who had five goals in the playoffs for the Bruins last year. And here we go. This, you know, the big hat trick on his 29th birthday. If this road trip and, and this post Morgan Riley suspension uh, winning streak is a turning point in the season, uh, well, Bertuzzi's 29th birthday might have to be lumped in with uh, those two events because it's it's uh, it also appears to be a big, big moment in a season that hadn't gone to plan to date, but certainly is on the right track suddenly. Totally agree with everything you said there. 4-3, the Leafs win over Colorado. This is Leafs game night on TSN 1050, the iHeart Radio app and the Leafs Radio Network. There are many peculiar words in the English language. Words like soliviant, peregrinate, nemophilus, peripatetic, and conviviality. Yet, there is no word for getting the most out of winter in your Subaru, thanks to symmetrical full-time all-wheel drive and X-Mode. Until now. We call it unhibernate. As in, while your neighbors stay home, you'll be unhibernating all winter in your Subaru. So peregrinate to your local Subaru dealer today, and welcome to Uncommon Winter Confidence. Who says kids get to have all the fun during March break? Say no to building a snowman. And shell yeah to building sandcastles with Sunwing Vacations. We've got what you're looking for out of paradise, like water parks, crystal clear waters, white sand beaches, and more. Not to mention a host of breathtaking destinations, each as beautiful as the last. When you save more, you can explore more with your travel agent or... So money is a thing, but it's not everything. I think you really look at the importance of what are you doing with your time. The conversations that we've had with our financial advisor is very much built, building what that framework looks like that helps support those important things. Uh, the places where you're investing your, your time and your resources, your family clearly, uh, and uh, those closest to you. Edward Jones. We do money differently. Visit edwardjones.ca slash different. Leafs game night. Toronto wins 4-3 over Colorado. The Avs' home record is now 22-6-0. Uh, and 0. Now, The Leafs on the road, 18-6-6. and 6. Jim Taddy, Dave Fastcheck from the Toronto Star with you, Dave. Uh, you know, I don't know when this happened. There must have been some sort of Maple Leaf coaching summit where they sat down and, and realized that maybe it was time to adjust things and maybe take some of the onus off the, uh, the Fab Four forwards. But whatever they decided... It's all worked out and supported by great performances, literally by everybody in their new role. It, it's just fun to watch. Yeah, it really is. I mean, this is, you know, the definition of what a team should be, where you, you got four lines, you got three defensive pairs, and you roll them. And Sheldon Keefe suddenly, after, you know, many games this season where it felt like he had to overplay his best players to get anything out of, uh, you know, out of, out of them because – they were the only guys providing the production. They were scoring 60 plus percent of the goals and, and earning 50 percent of the money, which is a little bit disproportionate. Uh, suddenly, you've got contributions springing up from places that just hadn't been producing. And obviously, Tyler Bertuzzi tonight with the three goals. But, you know, in previous games, we've been talking about the Bobby McMahon effect and how he's become a factor. And, and we've been talking about, hey, the, the, I thought the fourth line again tonight, you know, they didn't get on the score sheet. But, you know, uh, David Camp and, and, and Holmberg and Reeves, they, they were able to have some pretty good shifts in there. And, of course, they have been getting on the score sheet of late uh, to, some, to some effect. So 
those are huge those are huge developments in a season Jim because you know depth is so important not only in the regular season which is a grind but more so in the playoffs when when teams can focus on your best players and we saw it tonight like you know look at the look at the the focus the avalanche put on Matthews and defending Matthews and not leaving Matthews uh to find space or at least tried to not let him find space it's it's easier said than done and it's and it opened up things for other Maple Leafs and guess what when those things open up you have to take advantage of them and lately the other Maple Leafs if you want to call them the others have been taking advantage of their opportunities and their space so they had two power plays, and Bertuzzi scored on both of them and similar type goals where he's planted at the top of the crease, and it's off his stick in a second. The first goal, there was the trailer on the play that uh, he sort of broke out after a, a Samsonov goal line battle where you couldn't figure out why the Avs didn't score. They went down the ice, and Bertuzzi was the trailer on the play, and that was his first goal. So a birthday hat trick for a Maple Leaf has never been done before in all these years, but he did it tonight, and he talked about the birthday hat trick. Yeah, no, that felt good. Um, you know, that was a great road trip for us. You know, collecting eight points and you know being able to go home uh, on that note is uh, you know is awesome. What's it like for you to play on that power play? What do you what do you like about how it's clicking? Yeah, um, you know, I feel good out there. You know, just trying to find little holes here and there, and um, you know, obviously you saw tonight the, the, they'll they'll find you, and uh, you just got to find the openings. Where do you assess your confidence level after the last few games here, playing in that spot, but also like you're mixed there with Domi. And- yeah, I mean, yeah, even before tonight, you know, I was feeling good. Um, you know, I thought I was making good plays and, um, you know, just playing decent hockey and, um, you know, tonight felt good. What's the biggest reason the team's on such a roll right now? I think everyone's just buying in. Um, you know, we're at, a, we're at a point in the season where, um, you know, we got to kind of turn things on and, you know, have a winning mentality and, um, you know, take no games off and try and be as consistent as possible. What do you like about the line, how you guys are working together? Yeah, no, I felt good uh, with, with Domes uh, down the middle and, and Willie. Um, you know, our chemistry is still, still coming. Um, you know, still got some things to work on, but, you know, I felt, uh, felt good with them. So the Avs clearly aren't prepared for some of these passes that you're receiving. Like, are you, are you, are you even at any point caught off guard by some of these, these plays Mitch and William are making on the power play? Uh, the Mitch one, no. Uh, the Willie one, a little bit, yeah. Uh, that was a really nice play. Um, and the goalie was sliding to the other side. So, um, but yeah, no, just really good plays and just got to kind of find the right spot. Best birthday you've had in hockey? <laughs> Best birthday you've had in hockey? <laughs> uh, in ho- hockey-wise, I would say so, yeah. yeah. Charlie, what's been the key for you to stay patient when the production isn't always there? Yeah, I mean, just try and be positive. Um, you know, keep working hard and, um, you know, get to the net and, you know, eventually things will come. And, um, you know, just trying to slowly build confidence um, and hopefully it all work out. Hockey neutrals get wrapped up in McKinnon versus Matthews and that sort of thing. Do you kind of appreciate that even though they're on the ice with those guys when they're kind of competing the level that these guys have played at this year? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I get to see it every day, you know, with uh, with Austin. But obviously, um, you know, McKinnon's a, you know an unbelievable player. Um, so yeah, it's fun. To, it's fun to watch. Um, sometimes it's tough to watch him spin around the zone, but um, you know, yeah, it is fun to watch. Tyler Bertuzzi on his uh, birthday hat trick. So a uh, belated happy birthday to him. He's got 10 goals on the season. And uh, just, you know, as he said, everybody's buying in. I mean, uh, no truer words were said, Dave. Yeah, you can just see it. And and it's funny how that word, everyone, you know, the other night in Vegas, Max Domi was talking to reporters, and he must have used the word everyone. I think I counted it was about a half a dozen times in about three sentences. Like everyone's getting an opportunity. Everyone's contributing. Everyone is on board. Everyone's buying in. And I think that's part and parcel, Jim, with what we talked about with, with rolling the lines more with distributing the core four among three lines rather than two with uh, giving guys opportunities on the first power play, whether it be Domi getting a cameo there against Vegas or obviously Bertuzzi now moving in to that net front position on a regular basis. Uh, Not having the the entrenched hierarchy of this is our core four and these are the guys that always play on the first unit, even though the first unit is an elite unit. I mean, you know, they're they're second in the league and they have been with Tavares and without Tavares. And uh, but right now it's just, you know, I think when you involve more guys in more important moments, it can't help but trickle down into better feelings about each other, more self-confidence 
in everybody, and you saw it tonight with Bertuzzi. I mean, he he was he was absolutely rolling tonight, not just on the two power play goals, but on that rush goal where he bangs in a rebound, um, you know, a multi-dimensional attack, and and a, and a very very positive development for the Maple Leafs. Okay, let's drill a little deeper on 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 the lineup changes. Um, I, I think that we all know coaches, and, and I think Coach Keith would have been guilty of this. If, if guilty is the right word, I don't know that it is. Uh, you have to earn your ice time, the chicken egg thing, right? You have to earn your ice time, or you don't get it. Um, and I I agree that that works for a while, but after a while, it becomes punitive, um, and, and it sort of sours the guy who's struggling. I mean, you've got 82 games. Um, there should be a part of this, and, and I think Tortorella got into this a couple of weeks ago when Philadelphia was here. It's a different game now these are younger players um and and you can't sort of um you have to work with them you have to partner with them you have to work with them and help them find a way if you said that 30 years ago people would laugh at you but but that's where we are with this and and it's not a complaint i think that the the way forward is to find a way to engage everybody on the roster clearly dollars and cents uh, dictate that certain players get uh, certain ice times but the rest have to be engaged would you agree with that Oh, 100 percent. You know, it's uh, the the days of nailing guys to the bench for extended period. uh, It's just not going to work for you. Right. It's just it's it's not going to work to motivate players in general. And it's not going to work to motivate the team. I don't think anybody enjoys in this generation observing them, talking to them in 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 the dressing room uh, over the past whatever it's been handful of years with this team in particular. That just doesn't go over well. Nobody has a good feeling about it. So you're much better. In, in other words, to uh, just you know share share responsibility, share opportunity. Now you also have to share accountability. No one's saying you can have no accountability, but I but to if if a guy like a hardcore guy like John Tortorella is acknowledging that times have changed, even though he's happy to say that it is also a dumb league. I think was his quote, where guys make <laughs> a lot of mistakes, and uh, it is a dumb league in many in many respects. Um, but you have to deal with that dumbness in a different way than you would have a generation ago, and I think. Sheldon Keefe is showing you how to do it. Like you just, you just keep giving guys opportunities. You also demand things from them. He called out Bertuzzi, you know, not too long ago, talking about how his practice habits have to be better. Um, that's you know, that's that's the way you do it these days. You, you know, you say, look, we're willing to help you, but you got to help yourself. And here we go. You're getting some results in the very short term. Uh, let me throw another theory at you. And clearly, the Morgan Riley suspension is a TSN turning point. But I want to go back to when they decided to put Samson off on waivers. Um, then he cleared, and you know he was assigned air quotes to the Marlies, but spent a lot of time on his own uh, working with the Marley goalie coach and the Leaf goalie coach. And, and you know he was they were trying to redevelop him or, or refine him uh, without having him play in the American Hockey League, but but maybe assigned there. Um, and when that happened, you, you would sort of raise your eyebrows at it and go, "Well, we'll see how that works," but. But really, that was the respectful thing to do. And I think maybe that's the start of, of, of all of this. Would you agree? Did we lose Dave? I think I'm we back lost. now. Sorry, oh, I lost you there for a second. Yeah. You heard what I said, right? Uh, you were talking about Samsonov and the great yeah. turnaround, right? And, no, yeah. So, yeah, but I mean, but, the, it, but how the, how they did that was, was sort of a without having to. Uh, obviously, he didn't want to play in the American Hockey League. That's what it seemed to me like. And they found a way to make that work mm-hmm. without that happening, with, with showing respect, really. And I think that's really the start of all this stuff. One hundred percent. I think that's a great point. I mean, he look that there, there was a big, big problem there, right? Like he yeah. not only was he not playing very well in the crease. I mean, Samsonov is a guy, he's a big personality, right? And he's a very liked guy in that room. He's a very uh, funny guy in that room when things are going well. But when things were not going well, he was also a very influential guy on the downside. Like his his moping, his he was wearing his struggle uh, daily. And I think that had a very negative effect on that room. So I think that's part of the reason they sent him away for some time uh, on, on his own to get him away from the team, but also to get him recentered. And, you know, you look at the results since he's come back. I mean, he's 8 2 0, 9 13 save percentage. The save percentage has even been higher uh, during this win streak where he's been responsible for five of the seven wins. Uh, you know, this guy is, he's really, he really has turned it around. But to your point, uh, you have to give respect to the Maple Leafs in the way they facilitated that turnaround because I think it was very important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
So uh, I'm just looking at his record here. Yeah, well, even on uh, on the the website when they say you know, what games played, they got him down to the Toronto Marlies, but nothing. So I mean, they, yeah. they did that in a real classy manner and, and with respect. And I, I think a lot of people noticed that. And, and maybe it was the start of looking at things and saying, "Can we do this better?" I I don't know. I'm just speculating, but it it seems like when you look back at it retrospectively, that they've done a lot of that, and it's all worked out. It really has. It really has. And look, you know, good luck. Goaltending's still, you know, going to be a question mark, right? Like, because Samsonov has had his ups and downs, and, and you're never quite sure which version of him is going to show up in the long term. But look, they've got options at least, right? You've still got Martin Jones, who's been dependable enough. He's hey, he's he's won two of these seven games in the net, and even if his you know his numbers aren't exactly spectacular, and now you got Joseph Wall, who had a great outing with the Marlies on the weekend, a very promising sign that he gets a win for the Marlies in his continuing rehab from that high ankle sprain. And there's every expectation from people around this team. I, I know a lot of the people in the goaltending community have a, a very high expectation that Joseph Wall is going to come back and he's going to put pressure on Samson off to, for that number one spot again. And because he was, he, let's face it, he'd taken it over. Uh, yep. But when he was injured against Ottawa uh, two and a half months ago or whatever it was. And, you know, there's a lot of people who believe that Joseph Wall has both the mental game and the physical tools to be the number one goaltender in quite short order here. So we'll see how that all shakes out. Good for the Maple Leafs to have options is the bottom line, Jim, as yeah. the playoffs approach. Okay, here's Morgan Riley post game on getting a win against a very tough opponent. Yeah, obviously it's a tough uh a tough place to play against a really good team um, at the end of a road trip. So I think we had our hands full, but I think just the way we were able to manage it um, was great. You know, after the first, we got going, and, um, you know, we gave one up in the third, but we just kind of you know, kept with the game plan, kept uh, uh, within our structure, power play comes through, and it's a huge win. As a teammate, what's it like to see Bertuzzi have a night like this when, he, you know, the puck luck hasn't been for him all year? It's awesome. I mean, it's just kind of one of those things. It's, uh, I mean... I think the puck lot kind of comes and goes, and um, you know he hasn't let that affect him at all. Um, he's been playing great. Um, he's been a great teammate. Uh, so to watch him have a great night here um, is, is awesome for our group. Has he done well on the power play? Um, well, score goals tonight. Um, you know he he has a good knack just to I mean, be either net front or kind of just off the net in in some open ice, and you know I think that was the case here tonight. And, um, obviously, makes himself very valuable when he's down there, uh, you know, in that area. From not playing a couple, uh, coming into these couple of games, what are you noticing different about this group? Um, I think just, uh, I mean, last stretch here, we've just been well-rounded. Um, you know, we're playing within structure. Um, you know, late in games that are close, we're you know keeping composure. Uh, we're, you know, again, just trying to manage pucks, and you know, it just seems like we've. We've taken a step um, just in terms of, you know, overall growth and, um, you know, overall structure, composure. And, um, you know, that's nice to see this time of year. What's going through your mind during that shot block and towards your head? Like uh, it, no. I, you, I was okay. Yeah. yeah, so it's all good. What's it been like for the last couple of games? You come in, the team's playing well, you got yeah. a new partner. Like, what, what's yeah. it been like? I was definitely nervous about coming in because uh, the team was rolling. Uh, so that was a little... Uh, nerve-wracking, so I'm grateful we got two wins. Um, but you're just trying to find your game again. You're just trying to get back into a rhythm. You know, it's not as easy as it seems. Uh, but after a game or two, and then, you know, go home, have practice day, um, you know, I expect to be back and, you know, playing like my usual self. And um, But, the, I mean, the guys have been great, you know, very supportive. And, um, you know, obviously without me, they were they were playing outstanding, so I'm just trying not to, you know, upset the apple cart. Easy for Mitch right now. I know we talked a lot mm. about Austin, but he's right yeah. there, right there with No, him. yeah, he's, he's dialed. He's playing great hockey. Um, you know, again, he's, I mean, he'll, he'll always be one of those guys that I don't think gets enough credit for, you know, how well-rounded he is and the things he does defensively. Um, but in terms of the offensive production and stuff like that, he's been outstanding for us, clearly. Rattle, this is Leafs Game Night on TSN 1050, the iHeart Radio app and the Leafs Radio Network. Fuel your fandom when you listen to live sports on the all-new Sirius XM app. It's deep, it's going, yes. and it is going yes. on! It is Bethlehem at the bank! Hear the games you just can't miss. Caitlin Clark is the NCAA's all-time scoring leader. And get closer to the teams you love wherever you are. Connor McDavid wins the game for Edmonton! The action you crave is just a tap away. Live sports live on the all-new Sirius XM app. You gotta love sports!
sports. The Power Play with Steve Coolius. I'm with John Cooper, head coach of the Lightning. You've been in Tampa 12 years. Do you think you could run the table where you are? You know, we have something special here. For me personally, as, soon, as long as the fire still burns and the burn to win uh, and to make this city proud, I will do this as long until they kick me out. And as long as that's happening, if somebody takes me, uh, I'll be there to give them everything I have. The Power Play. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. The Point with Boomer Gordon. The Avs got a little Jekyll and Hyde going on this year. And when they're rolling, they look unstoppable and you think, wow, no one's going to slow down the Avs. And then when it doesn't go well, you go, they're just not deep enough. Nichushkin isn't there right now. We don't know if Landis Gog is going to come back. Yes, Colorado's good, Jake, but unless McKinnon's getting two, three points every night, they don't have the parts. Points with Boomer Gordon. 1 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. The Power Play with Steve Coolius. With Tyler Toffoli of the New Jersey Devils. Lindy Ruff, is he still the prankster in the room? Is- Just a quick little funny story. We had a little playoff football pool, and me and Nate Bastion won. Lindy obviously came up to me right away and asked where I was taking him out for dinner. He's been great at it. Just with, with the whole season and being there, uh, talking to all the boys when things aren't going well and just trying to encourage us to play the up to our potential. It's been good. He's, he's awesome. The Power Play. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. The biggest names in the game. Trying to get behind Risto Line and walks in, put it between his legs, shoots it, score! Any channel play by play on Sirius XM. Leafs game night. Jim Taddy, Dave Fest, check with the Toronto Star with you. 4 3. The Leafs come back to win in Colorado. It was a night of comebacks for the Leafs down 2 0, up 3 2, and then rallying to win at 4 3 on a the dreaded puck over the glass call on Ranton at uh, 1556. So the goal goes in at 1709 for Bertuzzi. An odd game that way because of the intensity. Benoit goes off at, what, 49 seconds for a puck over the glass. Colton with an interference on Bertuzzi in the first period. Uh, that results in Bertuzzi's first goal. And then Ranton with the puck over the glass. Only three penalties in that game. That's odd. Yeah, it certainly was. Cer- certainly was odd, but a lot of cr- crazy things happened. You know, we talked about all the scrambles in front and Samsonov pulling pucks off the goal line, and and certainly the Maple Leafs having their chances in front of Gorgiev, and and uh, a really fun game. I mean, this this yeah. was really one of the best games I've seen all season. Uh, back and forth, two great teams with some serious talent. McKinnon. Matthews uh, kind of lived up to the billing. Matthews really didn't factor on the score sheet, but was obviously a focal point of the Colorado defense all night, and they had to spend a lot of resources keeping an eye on him, and I think that opened up some lanes for other players, and, and certainly the Leafs used those lanes to great effect. Uh, more post game now. This is Mitch Marner on digging out of a hole early and getting the victory. Well, we didn't get discouraged. I think, uh, obviously, the third period... The, well, first off, they're a hell of a third team period, or third, yeah, third period team. There we go. And uh, we knew it. Um, they came out guns blazing. Um, you know, but I thought we, at the same time, did a good job of defending, um, staying poised. And obviously, when we need to, our power play came through. What's it like to see Bertuzzi have a night like this? Uh, it's great. Yeah, it's, um, you know, you knew he was due. Um, you know, I think the last couple of weeks, he's really been playing some great hockey. And um, that line between him, Willie, and Domes, you know, they move the puck very well. Um, they communicate very well. They've done a great job in the O zone and through all three zones. So um, all three guys got a lot of skill. Um, they can make plays. And, you know, Bert's uh, that guy that can get in the grimy areas, and he got rewarded for it tonight. Why is he uh, fitting so well on, on the power play? You guys haven't missed a step with him in that um, well, I mean, I think he just fits in well because, obviously, he's still a very elite tipper. Um, you know, gets good sticks on uh, pucks. You know, he gets in kind of around that net. He's great at screening the goalie. I think, um, you know, obviously it's pretty tough to kind of be out there, I think, with uh, a couple of us because we always want the puck. We're trying to call for the puck. We want it. And, uh, you know, usually that middle guy doesn't have too much fun. He's just kind of skating around trying to be net front and, you know, get rebounds and tips and stuff like that. And, um, you know, he's done a great job of just finding quiet ice. And, you know, today he got rewarded for it. What's the feel like around the team? What's this like right now for you guys? That's yeah, good. Um, you know, I think we're playing very good hockey, all four lines, all three D pairs, and we've had some massive saves from both our goalies. So, um, you know, we're going back home to another challenging team. Um, we got to make sure we're ready for that. But um, it's been good. It's been exciting. Obviously, it's a lot more fun around uh, the locker room when you're winning games. So, just got to make sure you keep doing the right things, um, keep building as a team in here, and, um, you know, when we're doing stuff right on that ice, it's showing. 
we make the Tom Morgans come back into the lineup. He was just telling us he's a little nervous. You know, you guys are doing well, but obviously he brings a lot. Yeah, I mean, he's only going to make it better for us. So, um, you know, I think that's always kind of the first reaction, though, when you, you, you kind of miss a couple games and the team's still rolling without you, you know. You uh, come back and you're kind of scared because you don't want to mess up the mojo and, you know, everyone's a little superstitious in their own way. But um, he's only going to help our team to get better, and he's done that the last two games or three games. He was just saying he feels like you guys, you in particular, don't get enough credit for that defensive element of the game. You talk a lot about the offense, but what do you like about the well-rounded nature of the game? Because that's a tough, tough opponent you're facing tonight, the McKinnon guys. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, obviously at core five or whatever you really want to call them um, you know they, they put a lot of pressure on you as a defensive team and um, they come at you with a lot of speed a lot of pace um, all five guys and guys can make plays and find quiet areas so um, you know I thought we did a good job of trying to be above them you know slow their speed down as much as possible and um, but I mean all four lines did a good job of that tonight Mitch Marner post game. So now, Dave, the next challenge is a five game home stand that'll take us to two days before the trade deadline. The night before the trade deadline, they're in Boston. And actually, on trade deadline week, they play Boston uh, at Scotiabank, then host Buffalo, and then go to Boston. So I, that, that's an interesting week. I, you know, I just wonder, and, and I think Ralphie uh, alluded to this earlier, and, and we've talked about this in the pregame. Based on what you're seeing now, you, you wonder what the ads are. You know, they're going to do something at the deadline, but it makes you really curious as to how they're going to add to this without getting in the way of this it's a great point you know morgan riley put it well you know you're a little you're a little trepidatious about i think he said upsetting the apple cart when you join rejoin a team that is rolling like this one has been rolling and of course riley's been a part of the most recent two wins but had been sitting out due to suspension for those first five of this seven game win streak so you're right it, it does have to change somewhat the way you look at this team. But I also think, look, Jim, as much as this is a bit of fun streak and it's it's great that they're on their longest winning streak since 2003 and it's great that they're, you know, getting four-line production in a way they haven't had four-line production all season. If you're Brad Tree Living and Brendan Shanahan, you got to look at the whole here. you got to look at all right. the games, not just these seven games. You've got to look at all 56 games. And, and not only all 56 games, but – Previous playoffs and, the, you know, the guys who are the through line of this team and this era and, and what they've lacked and what they've needed and what has worked and what hasn't worked. And, you know, it's, it's got to be a big picture analysis of what this team needs. It's, it can't be small picture. Wow, we're rolling. Let's leave it as it is because, you know, this seven game streak is fun but it's not reflective of who they are completely because they have played another 49 games before it. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Uh, and again, they will do something, but and they're going to know, uh, you know, of all the things that have happened here. I hate to use the word legitimate, but 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 I'm going to use it because sometimes guys achieve and and it's it looks good, but but it's not legitimate. Um, and they know all of that because they they track all this stuff, so they know it's going to happen before it does, basically, based on the numbers. So I would defer to them on on what happens next. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, let, let, let's face it. You don't go on a seven-game winning streak with a – what are they at now? They're plus 21. They're outscoring their opponents 38-17 to 17 during this uh, seven-game run here. It's their best goal differential over a seven-game stretch in 30 years, Jim. So, yeah, like they're getting a little bit lucky to do that, obviously, but they're also playing really well. I liked what Morgan Riley said. Um, and maybe if you're Brad Trilving, this is something you listen to because Riley's saying, look, we've taken a step in terms of structure and composure. And those are two things that this team, let's face it, at their worst moments, structure and composure have been glaring weaknesses, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, not making big mistakes in big moments and obviously having the discipline to maintain the kind of defensive structure that you need to maintain to win games in tight situations against other elite teams. Um, for Morgan Riley to say that, that's that. look, that's a great sign. He's been watching some of it from the press box during his suspension. Now he's a part of it on the ice. Uh, I do. I, I sense that too. There, it, there does feel like something has changed here in the, in the, in the way this team is uh, approaching games. And uh, mostly, you know, obviously there's been weak spots and there's been moments where they, they veer from it. But by and large, they've been sticking to it. And that is a really good sign. Yeah, uh, just a quick thought on the way out. Maybe it's the timing of when this is happening. You think back to last year and uh, November, December, when they had all those defenseman injuries and, and they got through that, and you thought that that would uh, propel them forward. Well, it sort of did, but 
But to have it happen here going into the trade deadline at this time of the year, much better than December and November. Yeah, well, you can look at it a number of ways, right? If uh, if it's about showcasing guys, you might have to trade. This is a good showcase <laughs> moment because there's a lot of guys playing well. And if it's about, hey, convincing you that maybe you don't need to make as many additions as you previously thought, although we're going to quibble about that a lot between now yeah. and March 8th, Jim, and certainly we'll probably feel differently when the inevitable loss comes. Uh, hey, maybe they'll never lose again, but you, if they do lose again, I'm sure there'll be people saying, hey, maybe they do need a little bit more here and a little bit more there. Look, I don't think it's rocket science to believe they could. every team can use a little bit more uh, almost everywhere, but certainly for the Leafs on the D, and then some more forward depth could not hurt. Dave, thanks very much. Leafs win at 4-3. This is Leafs Game Night on TSN 1050 and the Leafs Radio Network. You've been listening to NHL Play-By-Play on Sirius XM. Head over to Sirius XM NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM 91, for the best hockey talk. That and getting Sidney Crosby to wear a mullet during warm up and Crosby doing his routine with so the good. mullet on. Everything Great. about it, everything about it was spectacular. Everything. And someone mentioned to me if you're going to shout out anybody from the Penguins organization, you should shout out. Uh, Kevin Acklin. Uh, Kevin is the president of business operations. He's an alternate governor. He sat at the podium when Yager met with the media on Sunday morning, and they said that Acklin was given the responsibility of making sure this worked, and a lot of it worked because of who Yager is and the love that the organization, the players, and the fans have towards him and Yager's own ability to grasp the moment, but... Acklin was the guy who was sort of behind it, making it all work. So I think Phil Bork I'll shout out, Acklin I'll shout out, and of course Yager and the Penguins fans. The Penguins fans helped make... I saw the lineups like even before the ceremony began. They embraced it. I think what this does is it's a reminder that we don't often get to write our own exits. But what we forget and what we need to remember is that time can heal. And I think there was a lot that happened. Like Yarmir Yager, for everything he did in Pittsburgh, he should never have been forgotten. Like even if he went and went and played for half the league after he left, it shouldn't have mattered. You know, he got traded, things changed, that happens. But it's always a reminder that we need time to have things heal. And I'm glad it happened, and I'm glad everybody made it work, because it was a spectacular weekend, a smashing success. Get the latest news, opinion, and analysis from MMA to boxing and the professional wrestling world 24-7. Sirius XM Fight Nation, Sirius XM 156, and the SXM app. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM NHL schedule for Saturday, February the 24th. In the NHL, noon, Detroit Red Wings taking the St. Louis Blues. Red Wings on Sirius NXM Channels 91, Internet 930. Blues on Internet 945. 2 p.m., New Jersey Devils taking the Montreal Canadiens. Devils on XM 219, Internet 937. Canadians on Internet 935. 2 p.m., New York Islanders take on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Islanders on XM 220, Internet 938. Lightning on Internet 946. 3 p.m., Philadelphia Flyers take on the New York Rangers. Flyers on Sirius NXM channels 91 Internet 941, Rangers on Internet 939. 6 p.m. Florida Panthers face the Washington Capitals. Panthers on XM 219 Internet 932, Capitals on Internet 950. 7 p.m. Vancouver Canucks take on the Boston Bruins. Canucks on Sirius NXM channels 91 Internet 948, Bruins on Internet 922. 7 p.m. Colorado Avalanche take on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Avalanche on XM 221 Internet 920 